The thing about it is I, he's not here, he's not going to be here, so we don't talk about it. I texted him yesterday um, before the deadline, asking him, uh, or, you know, text him, tell him hope he was going to show up. And if he decided not to, I wish him nothing but the best. He was a great teammate, a great football player. Um, you know, to each their own on what they want to walk away from. Uh, if you need $14, we can probably find some for everybody here, though. Ben, not only the money, <laughs> could you see yourself ever missing a year of football when you're prime? That'd be tough. Um, the, the great thing about this sport is his band of brothers and his group of guys in here. Um, and being with them, uh, it's kind of what keeps me coming back at, 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 you know, after so many years too. But um, like I said, to each their own, each guy has their own um, motives and motivations and um, you know, I can't comment on him. Uh, I am glad that we won't talk about this anymore though. Did he text you back? No. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Goon Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Mandel, the Goon, and this is your Week 11 Fantasy Preview. Joining me, as always, is my good buddy and friend, John Santucci, the Tooch. And starting this week, we have a new member of our crew. Welcome, Tyler Gaines, the Gaines Report, joining the squad. Gaines and Tooch, what's going on, guys? Hello. Oh, baby. We got some fantasy football going on, baby, man. Thanks, guys. Oh, hell yeah. We're, we're, We're glad to have you. We're fired up. And uh, unfortunately, our, our good friend Jeff Schwartz not able to make it tonight, uh, dealing with some of the wildfires out in California. Our thoughts are with him. Uh, hopefully, everything is going all right for you, Jeff. And but Jeff did text me today, guys. He wanted me to let you know his pick of the week, the garbage man Blake Bortles. So, mm. if you're rolling with Jeff, you're going to fire up the garbage man this week. Going on a limb. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. It's it's yeah. possible. It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, Pittsburgh gives Pittsburgh gives up a lot of yards in the, in the secondary. Yeah, and so garbage man, and then with with um, Fournette looking the way he's looking, they might get back to their bread and butter. Oh, you know it. Fournette looked like he was back to his old self last week, right, boys? Yep. And guess who picked him up four weeks ago when he was looking like some trash? <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> I, buy, I buy cheap and I sell them high. Let's go. Yeah, Bortles 320 yards and two touchdowns last week. So, you know, Jeff could be onto something. I'm not, I'm just making fun. Hey, man. Fantasy points are fantasy points, right? True. Yep. True. True. I hate that. Garbage time, garbage time matters. I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah. It's the truth. It really yep. is. Garbage time in fantasy is more important to the fantasy player than it is to anybody else in the entire world. Oh, and, yeah. and a lot of times, garbage time games. The reason the ratings stay up is because of the fantasy player, right, boys? Yeah, true, 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 true. Fantasy impact on the NFL popularity, you know, it's, it's it's immeasurable. It really is, and it's invaluable for the league. And speaking of fantasy value, we're going to go into the first segment for this week, gentlemen. And this is a segment I like to call Le'Veon Bell Hell. Oh, it's <laughs> wow. Talk about hell for a number two overall pick. Yeah, I, I'm going to start with you, Tooch. What do you take out of this whole Le'Veon Bell situation? Well, I, I feel sorry for the people that drafted him. And and, and Joe, uh, would you say that the fantasy owners who drafted uh, Le'Veon won, were winners of the Nobel Prize? But I'm bumped. Sorry. <laughs> There's sorry, the dad Tyler. joke from um, the dad. Dad joke. <laughs> you know, if I was picking that high, uh, Tyler, I, I wouldn't, Joe, I, I wouldn't have picked Le'Veon Bell. You know, I would have stayed oh. away from him. I just, the, the, that cloud was hanging over him. So I, you know, I, I, I would have, I, I, he was probably drafted, what, two overall, Joe? Most, In most leagues, yeah. 
mm, 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 mm. sad. That's that's this damn sad. If you draft him, you deserve that shit. Well, why would you ever draft a player who's on a holdout? Like why? <laughs> like like why would you do? But not but especially in the, especially in the first round, especially in the first round, and especially knowing that he already said he wanted to be paid and he cared about his body. And so, at least the second round, I would have ate that, but not in the first round. If you did that shit, you deserve it. Sorry, with all respectfully. Yeah. Yeah. Des Bryant injury keep, is going to keep him away for the rest of the season. You know, just proves his point. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it, it is, and it just. But look what it make how it makes him look. I mean, James Conner comes into the picture, fills his shoes like he never left, mm-hmm. and now this kid, James Conner, is in the MVP consideration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Pittsburgh. Huh? And- I mean, heart, heart and soul, man. Heart and soul. Connor came in. I mean, he, he has an amazing story, first of yeah. all. Oh, my I God, mean, yeah. I mean, I mean you, talk, you talk about living the dream of having your number called. Like, man, and being prepared is one thing. Is what, Kirk Cousins, it's funny. That's what we play against this week. When, you, when you're ready, when your number's called, and you perform, and then you can have the, you, your whole life changes. Your whole life changes, then you got to, you got to be the focal point of a, of a, potential, a great franchise. Just like that. Let's face it, uh, James Conner, a cancer survivor, just a better story than Le'Veon Bell. Oh, no yeah. doubt, and a and better that... hometown hero. I mean, it's it's it's, it, but it's, but you can't fault Le'Veon. Like I'm not, I mean, I'm not going. I don't want to speak out of turn. I know Twitch, you're going. I mean, yeah, Conner's doing great, but I don't. But Le'Veon got to do what Le'Veon got to do. Yeah, I agree. And someone's going to pay him in the off season. Let's face it. Oh he's yeah, he's going. He's going to set the. He's going to reset the damn market. And you know what, guys, I, I'm with him. But I was yeah. my turn. I was my turn. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of teams that would love to have him, you know, that are, are just don't have a good running game. There's a lot of teams. A lot yeah. of teams. I mean, Philadelphia comes to mind, you know. Tampa Bay. Oh, a couple they, teams. They would they would sell their soul right now for a running back, Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Yep. They they go from winning the Super Bowl to probably not even making the playoffs. Yeah. When, when it comes when it comes to um, players and these holdouts, guys, we got to remember, like we got to put ourselves in the player's shoes. The players set the market for the rest of their players in the position. And so when when when, when wide receivers or running backs take a low contract, you hurt your brethren, you hurt your friends. Yep. Like it's, yeah. it's so like I can't remember like when Des Bryant was crying for all that money, and then his he took a little punk ass deal, like you messed up the market. And so and when like when, so. When Le'Veon sets that, it's going to make it better for guys like Jordan Howard. Because if Le'Veon takes a crappy deal, that's just less money that other guys got to take. And so it's bigger than just, I, I commend them. Because most people will be scared to, to miss the whole season. Because of what what the fans are going to say. And what people are going to say, you got to take care of your family, one. Yes, we get it, he's a millionaire. But at the same time, the guy signing his check is is trying to save money. It's just it's cheaper, la- it's cheaper labor at a different level. You feel me? It's just a I, different level. I, so I, we just got we got to respect that. I, I feel you, man. This the, the thing that I have a problem with is leaving fourteen and change million dollars on the table. Like if I if I left that sitting just because I didn't show up to work, I think I'd kick myself in the ass all day long. Yeah, yeah, true, true. You're absolutely right. But but when we compare, are we comparing? Like, I mean. Comparing my salary to Le'Veon's is like not even in the same like network or atmosphere, or whatever you want to call it. Sure. But it's just like, but when you know your worth, bro, he he's not just a running back. Right. He's the running back. And so he has to do what he has to do. If Aaron Rodgers was pissed off, Aaron, this would it, this wouldn't happen to Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. No way. This this wouldn't happen to Cam Newton. This wouldn't happen to those guys in their contract year. Cam Newton. Cam Newton first. Cam Newton's first year getting um. A free agent. This this is what this wouldn't happen, and so but he's all mind you. He's already played under the franchise tag. He's already done it, guys. We have to understand the anxiety that comes along with that. Oh, it's... Kirk, Kirk. This is why I. But this is why. And I'm sorry if I'm going too long. This is why I was in. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going too long. I'm about to go. You're good. Kirk. You're good. Finish. Finish your thought, man. This is why I was. I, this is why I was. I was happy for Kirk Cousin when he got his deal. Because when you play underneath, you play underneath the franchise tag. I'm here in D.C., so we played in the, in the franchise tag here in Washington for all those years back to back. That's the that's the um, franchise getting over on you. But the anxiety that it takes to practice every single day, knowing you could tear your ACL. Look at Dez, just like that. Boom, done. Yep. Off a one year deal. 
so but the, but for, but for Le'Veon to already have done that, and Kirk did it twice. Like it's so yeah. you have to man, it, that's a lot of anxiety and stress, man, that go yep. along with that. Le'Veon just tired of playing under the tag, you know, worrying about his body, like you said. Now it comes to mind like this is this is a great place for Le'Veon Bell would be Baltimore. You get his revenge on Pittsburgh. You oh know, my Pitt, God. Baltimore with that great defense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bro, yeah. I'm gonna Le'Veon Bell going shit, to Baltimore man. would be it'd be great for the for Le'Veon, man. Just he gets to play his old team twice a year. Mm-hmm. He gets his contract. He stays in the division. Genius, you know? but you, genius, genius, brother. But even bigger than that, bro. Yo, I think I was talking to you about this earlier, Joe. But not <laughs> even. But let's take it a step further. Let's take it a step further. You have got Lamar Jackson, Jackson. Lamar Jackson, over. and Le'Veon. Just about to say that. Yeah. Lamar Jackson and Le'Veon. That's some it? dangerous stuff right there, man. man. You oh man. A lot, of, a lot of Ravens jerseys. Oh, that changes. But what Ravens jerseys? Jackson. But what better way? What better way for a brand new GM? Because oh, remember, remember, Ozzy, Ozzy blessed him with a gift. Yes, he did. He blessed him with a gift on his way out the door. Here you go, guys. Remember me, Lamar Jackson. What better way for a new GM to make a statement and say, hey, we're not the same respectfully cheap Ravens anymore, and we're going to pay top dollar for the top running back. And, oh, yeah, it's our division rival, so F you guys. Yeah. I mean, right now their best, their best running back is Alex Collins and Ty Montgomery with Buck Allen. You figured yeah. Montgomery and Collins probably gone, makes room for Bell to come in, and you got Bell and Allen. That'd be a nice combo too. That changes yeah. everything because that young defense, defense over there, yeah, still man, still pretty good defense over there. So, and you're talking yeah. about a team, guys, still that's going to make a deep playoff run. I think anyway. I mean that defense is great, and this is actually a great segue. Unless you guys, I'll, I'll let you guys finish your thoughts on Le'Veon Bell. Do you guys have anything else you want to talk about Le'Veon Bell? Nah, man, don't 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 come to my division, man. <laughs> Tooch, you got anything else you want to talk about, Bell? Uh, no, I'm good. Well, that's perfect. This is a great segue because you're talking about the Baltimore Ravens, and I want to talk about you know the playoff push, gentlemen, the strength of schedule coming up with playoffs, right? So let let me read you the Baltimore Ravens schedule, okay? <laughs> this is this is from this week forward. Week 11, Cincinnati. Week 12, Oakland. Week 13, Atlanta. Week 14, Kansas City. Week 15, Tampa Bay. And week 16, the Chargers. So you're talking about, you know, five out of those six games being absolute layups. This is a team you want to target players for during the fantasy playoffs. Yeah, I invested. I invested in a couple players myself. <laughs> I, I'm 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 having a tough time with the Ravens, bro. I'm having a tough time with the Ravens. Um, they were hot. They they were they looked hot, but I be feel like they they cooled off in my opinion the last couple of weeks. The offense has struggled yeah. a little bit, and the defense has gotten gotten worked out, man. The defense. I mean, I think I can't. I don't even know if I still have them on my roster. I probably traded them away before they went down. Just because I had Jacksonville as another back, just as backup defenses. They've been giving up some points, man. Yeah, they they've been giving up some points, but I think, but but Joe's hip. Th- this goes back to the injury, and so Joe Flacco's hip. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's it's, 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 it's I don't know right now. Well, they're they're yeah. in the position where Lamar Jackson may get a few starts here. Tooch, I know you're high on Lamar Jackson. What do you think about his fantasy value? Well, you know he's going to have some bumps and bruises, but uh, you know if if. If he can, you know, he's going to do a lot of damage with his legs. You know, you're going to see some, like, Colin Kaepernick 76-yard runs, you know, to, for that, to the house. But, uh, you know, Baltimore's still a good defense. They're only at they're, I know, games that they've been getting beat up a couple weeks in the past, but they're still the number two overall defense, and they're only giving up 17.8 points per game. Now, against some of those other teams, that's going to change. The Kansas City is probably going to blow that number up a little bit. But uh, I mean, the only team that's better than them in points per game is Tennessee, which is really surprising defense, sixteen point eight points per game. You know, that's the you know that that's the team. Uh, I, I, that's one team I still can't figure out is Tennessee. They have a great defense. <laughs> They're very stingy. You know, and they beat they've beaten some really good teams. You know, just surprising when you think they're going to lose, they they end up beating the tough team. But uh, you know, Baltimore. 
with that cupcake schedule, I did invest in a few players. You know, John Brown and Michael Crabtree. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Good passing matchup. Just, so you, you can't go wrong with a good Brown. Brown with a deep ball. That two could two good deep balls will get you good with Brown. Yeah, and and, and I like Alex Collins, and I like. Buck Allen, both of those guys probably going to get some scores. I don't know what to think about Ty Montgomery just yet. I uh, kind of want to wait and see with him. But those two backs I think are going to be fine. And then, you know, we talked about the tight end situation there, John. Uh, Hayden Hurst, and then you got Mark Andrews. Tooch, w- which guy do you like out of those two for the playoff push, if any? I, I actually kind of like them both. You know, I, I, I when I saw when I saw him play the Bears in the preseason, Hayden Hurst was just eating eating us up. Yep. You know, but uh, Mark Mark Andrews is faster and he's a better route runner. But uh, I mean, it's hard to tell. Um, the thing is with a uh, uh, Baltimore's, ha- I, I mean, Gaines would probably know better than me, but I, I think uh, uh, Baltimore's had some injuries along their offensive line uh, recently, and I think that's kind of why they've struggled the past few weeks. But uh, if they get that in shape, I think uh, with that cupcake schedule, that you know, you're gonna see some. Uh, I mean, it's hard. Alex Collins was great the end of last year. You know, he was one of the most productive running backs in fantasy, and uh, or that if he can get back on track, you know, Baltimore will make that playoff push. Yeah, I'm with you, man. There's there's a lot of teams with great schedules, and I have a handful of them here for you guys. Now, one team here that a lot of people aren't even gonna think about is the Cleveland Browns, okay? Listen great, listen to me for a quick second. Let me let me give you the schedule here. Uh, they're Obviously, they're on bye this week, so we're not going to play any of those guys now. But starting next week, week 12, we got Cincinnati, Houston, Carolina, Denver, Cincinnati. That's a pretty good playoff gamut right there, Houston being the toughest mm-hmm. matchup there. But uh, what do you guys think about the Cleveland Browns as, as playoff Fantasy guys, I mean, they could lead you there if you trust them. Honestly, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was going to one thing. I'm glad I I, I picked up Nick Chubb. (laughs) Oh my God, yes. Mm -hmm. Someone that was impatient, you know, they picked him up and dropped him. You know, he wasn't he wasn't playing. You know, they still had Carlos Hyde, and uh, I think one game he he had like a long touchdown run. I was like, I'm just going to pick him up and stash him. Hell yeah, I saw that. That's exactly what I did too. Yeah. And he didn't do nothing for two more weeks, three more weeks after that. But it was okay. He, you saw something special. Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and that's like that's a workhorse back that can win you a championship, guys. For people that picked him up when they did, and you stashed him and you held on to him, yeah. your patience is going to be rewarded because they have a good schedule. And look, let's face it, he's a workhorse back. Yep. Call it a little bit optimistic and foolish. I have it on a text a thread or somewhere. I actually, in the offseason, um, called the Browns to finish second in the division underneath the, the um, Pittsburgh Steelers. And um, I didn't foresee the firing and all this other stuff. I just saw the, I saw the framework of toughness, and I saw some really, really good draft picks because I really liked Denzel Ward. And I, wouldn't have, I would not have been mad if the Bears would have got him at all. Yeah. And yep. then I saw some footage on Nick Chubb. I'm like, and then and then when they got Baker, I'm like, they got some, they got a quarterback with some moxie. Interesting, but not. Yeah. I, didn't, I but I didn't know he was going to play. I really thought Taylor was going to show, have a good season, and show that he still has some entertainment left and be a good mentor. And so, because the Ravens have been so wish washy, and the Ravens letting like the left tackle walk last year, I'm like, what are they really doing on that line? Like, you just got your quarterback back from injury. You see what I'm saying? And like, yeah. well, even just, just a touch on that real quick. Like, Joe Flacco's only got four touchdowns in the last five weeks, but no, yeah. five five touchdowns were only for five touchdowns with four interceptions. And so, there's something going on with the offensive line. So, no, no matter no matter how good your defense is, if they're on the field too much, they're going to get tired and they're going to give up points. And so, when you get a defense like the the Browns, when they got first round picks everywhere, yes, they, they do. <laughs> And then when you get it, when they get, they got, they got decent coaching in there. And so the Browns, they're getting it together, man. And it's, it's been three years in the coming. And I actually like the job. Hugh Jackson is the John Fox, is the John Fox <laughs> of the Browns. Yeah. He, I was talking with some of my, my bar fight, um, my bar fight tailgate guys. And it, guys, it was like this. We got John Fox. They got Hugh Jackson. We needed him the most. They've been through so much turmoil. They were just the shit show. 
of the league, just kind of like we were. We can kind of yeah. see we are of each other of the different conferences and stuff. But Hugh, they became tough. I mean, look how many games they lost this week, this year by by one point. These are Super Bowl caliber teams they were doing this to. Yeah. Tampa Bay, they beat the Ravens, guys. Yep. They beat the Ravens already. Pittsburgh, yeah. Pittsburgh got lucky. <laughs> and so, hey yeah, man. Pittsburgh. And the, and then this this coach this coach looks exciting. And I got I got Nick Chubb too in both leagues. So hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> Love it, yeah. gentlemen. It's uh, with 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 Cleveland. I mean, they're actually the thirty. 31st ranked defense giving up almost 420 yards per game, but they're not giving up a lot of points. That's kind of the the illusion where uh, Cleveland, you know, they're not, they're actually not a terrible defense. They've got some players on defense. You know, I actually kind of thought, uh, I thought, you know, I'm mean, well, I'm glad the Bears drafted Trubisky. I kind of thought Cleveland was going to go after him in that draft, him being a hometown Cleveland uh, kid, you know, and, uh, They've got their quarterback now, Baker Mayfield, and we've got Trubisky. And, uh, you know, they're kind of similar quarterbacks run around a lot. I mean, Trubisky's – Trubisky reminds me of Bobby Douglas. I don't know if you guys remember Bobby Douglas, the Bears sure. uh, yeah. quarterback. used to run around a lot and stuff. Uh, uh, Trubisky is a, is a good runner. You know, he, he that's, that's where uh, he's going to do a lot of damage, especially in fantasy. You know, he's able to scramble around. He's going to end up getting some long runs. Just the more he gets familiar with playing in this league, you know, he's going to end up uh, going to have that Russell Wilson kind of damage to teams. And that that's really what you're looking for. I think Mayfield will probably give him something, you know, upwards close to that. But, uh, yeah, Cleveland definitely on, on, a, on a rise. And I, I get the John Fox analogy. I mean, when uh, – when we were the, my biggest dep- uh, depression, Bears depression was the Mark Tressman era. You know, oh my to, god! To go, to go from that into John Fox just didn't help much. Tyler, you know, <laughs> was uh, was uh, you know, I was like John Fox. What are we, we're going, you know, we're going, we're going into the past. You know, it's like the old school's kind of moving out, and that's was Hugh Jackson and John Fox, which is the new school was coming in, Nagy and you know these uh, offensive quarterbacks, Doug Peterson and Frank Reich. Yep. You know, that's kind of the direction of the league, and uh, it's great for fantasy, but Joe. It is great for fantasy, yeah. and, and and we're going to pick this segment back up, but we have a special guest today that I'm going to queue up on the line right now. Our friend Ryan Heckman coming in, guys, going to preview the Bears-Vikings game with us. So let me go ahead and add him in real quick, and, and we'll get him queued up. Awesome. While we wait, gentlemen... What are your thoughts on this fantasy season as a whole right now? I, I know it's a really vague question, but for me, it's been one of those years that, you know, it's so many up and downs throughout the year. I, I just have a hard time putting my finger on it. Well, I'm having yeah. a terrible time picking games. <laughs> but uh, That too. No. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is the most fun year for me because of the Barroom League and the you know, Fantasy Football Goon League. You know, and then the the show is uh, you know we're finally getting a lot of a lot more listeners. So for me, this is the best year. Oh yeah, absolutely. We love everybody tuning in, getting a lot of people listening to the show. You know, we're we're getting better as we go on, and just having a blast on the air. You know, we got Tyler joining us now. We're pumped about that, and, and getting all these great guests like Ryan and other folks. And uh, it's it's a great year. We got Jeff Schwartz on the show almost every week. We had Mike North on the show. It's, that was amazing. <laughs> probably my favorite show it was yeah. just so much fun yeah man now this is this, guys so this is an absolute dream this is a this i'm living a dream right now and this is this and i'm in first place and so fantasy fantasy year is going great and the bears are doing great and the fact that th- this show was on first of all so we can help people because this is a playoff push a lot of a lot of people are like trying to decide are they are they selling are they just going to not look at their phone anymore? Or are they going to yeah. hit the waiver wire? So this is that week where a lot of some people are, are deciding where they're going. Or some people are already into the NBA season already. But the people that are, are into it, they're listening in. And if they're smart and if they want to win, then they should be listening in right now too. Promoting the show and getting more listeners, that's the goal heading into you know off season and you know, previewing. We'll have some preview shows of players to look out for next year. Maybe a draft show. Uh you know, for uh, players to watch for the draft. Me had rookies, rookies producing this year. Nick Chubb, Calvin mm-hmm. Ridley. You know, yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at players like that for next year. 
Hey, hey there yep. he is. There he is, gentlemen. Welcome Ryan Heckman to the oh, Fantasy man. Football Goon Show. He's here, everybody. He's here. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can. Are we up and running? We are up we and are. running. We are on the air and everything. I mean, we're, we're recording. We're not live. It'll be it'll be live on your podcast stream on Thursday <laughs> morning. But uh, All right. well, Ryan, welcome to the show, man. Ryan's here to preview the Bears-Vikings game. Uh, he's a Bear fan living in Minnesota, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> tough times, man. Tough times. It'll be an interesting weekend. <laughs> Oh, welcome, man. welcome to the show, Ryan. Yeah, hey, he's thanks, coming thanks from for having me, guys. The, the, the Windy City fan-sided. Uh, you know, Heckman is in the Fantasy League with us. He has a good time. We always talk about trades, and we had some interesting takes this year, man. It's been a fun year in this league. Uh, I'm just uh, happy to have you on the show and curious to get your takes on Bears-Vikes coming up this week. Yeah, man. Well, hey, uh, again, thanks for having me. And um, I wanted to use this as an opportunity, you guys, for uh, a pretty huge announcement. And you guys are going to be the first to know. Um, and I think Bears Barroom will be excited to hear this, too. So we got to make sure everybody's tuning in. Breaking news. Um, breaking news. <laughs> yeah, breaking news. So, you guys, I just uh, I just got off the phone, believe it or not, with uh, with Michael Lombardi. And what? Wow. Yeah, man, and you're not gonna believe this, but for the first time in his life, he is actually now potty trained. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable! That means, <laughs> that means, folks, that he can finally stay overnight at the official Barbie Princess summer camp, Ooh. and <laughs> he's no longer a liability at weekend slumber parties. So I think. As a congratulatory gift, we got to get Aldo on maybe a branded pair of Bears Barroom Big Boy underwear, as my four-year-old would nice. call it. Nice. Love it. <laughs> we got to get him on that. So uh, congratulations, Mr. Lombardi, and I hope you enjoy the game this Sunday night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he might He might need a pair of Depends after this game. He Damn. might. He you just know, might. Speaking of Lombardi, I got to ask you, Ryan, uh, I don't know if you, you saw Mitch Trubisky's uh, co comments when someone asked him or told him what Mike Lombardi had said. And he yeah. was like, I, I, I don't know who that is. Do you think, uh, I, I tweeted out, I was like, do you think, uh, I mean, Mitch Trubisky's from Cleveland. Lombardi was the GM of Cleveland. <laughs> he, had, he has to know who Lombardi is. Which I, I think it was a sly dig, and I love Mitch for doing that. It makes me uh, respect him all that much more. Yeah, it could have been, and you know, he might just be maybe a little too young. Um, I don't know. He he could be being honest, but you know, I did see his quote where he said that you know I'm I'm not concerned about anything outside of this this organization outside of this room, and I and I like that. So um, yeah, regardless, he's got the right attitude. So for sure. Um, but yeah, Bears Vikes, man. I. I, I, I've got some I've got some interesting numbers for you guys. I don't know what you've covered so far, if it's been all fantasy, but if we're getting into this game. Yeah. Um, yep. So yeah, tell me tell me your thoughts on, on these numbers here. First of all, guys, the Chicago Bears are are top ten in the NFL in yards per play on offense. Offense. Jesus. Yeah. Did we ever imagine such a thing would happen a year ago? Just twelve short months ago. No way. Shoot, eight months ago. Eight months ago, if, if I would have told you, guess what? The Bears are going to be a top 10 team on offense in terms of yards per play. I would have I would have never, I would have called you a liar. I mean, coming from the offensive folks we had in charge last year, I mean, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what Matt Nagy is doing, I, th I honestly, I think this offense is good enough to put up points against any defense in the NFL. They have enough playmakers. They have enough speed, which we know in the NFL, in today's NFL, offensively, you got to have speed or you're not going anywhere. And I think they have enough to to score on anybody. Um, now, again, with that, is, is Mitch going to make some mistakes? Yeah, but that's okay. He's allowed to. He's still young. He's still growing. I don't yep. want to hear about any other young quarterbacks in the NFL. We're not comparing um, Mitch has, has been improving week to week, and they have enough playmakers around him where they're going to put up some points. But yeah, top ten in yards per play—that's astounding. That's uh, uh, go ahead, dude. Sorry, I was gonna I was gonna throw it back to you now. Minnesota 
defense starting to play good. Also, they are. They don't give up a lot of points to the quarterback. You know, right. they're, they're they're the best in the league against quarter fantasy quarterbacks. Now, uh, Mitch, this I, well, Mitch has been hot last five games, putting up big fantasy numbers. This seems like uh, a week where he's not going to put up good big fantasy numbers. Thoughts? Well, you know, I'm not saying that I would I wouldn't call him a, a surefire start this week. I'd be hesitant to play him. Um, and yeah, that's mainly because this Vikings defense has been coming to play the last few weeks. But again, if you look at who they face, they've only faced one really good offense, and that's the Saints. And the Saints put up 30 points. You know, the Saints have two good good running backs. So do the Bears. The Saints. I mean, arguably, Michael Thomas could be argued as the best wide receiver in the NFL, depending on how you're looking at it. But outside of Thomas, I mean, look, they just tried to sign Des Bryant, and it didn't work out. Outside of Des, they don't have anybody to really to throw the ball to. Um, you look at the Bears, they've got plenty of diverse options to throw the ball to. So the Vikings are going up against another potent offense. I just said potent offense in reference to the Bears. You, you guys, this is weird. <laughs> Pinch me, I'm dreaming. <laughs> it's crazy. But, no, you're right. Um, you know, the Vikings, I mean, I, I'm kind of all over the place. I was going to go down the line here with some numbers I have, but we can get into it. Um, you know, the Vikings on defense are the number one third down defense in the NFL. 26% on third down that's pretty incredible i mean one out of four third downs you're expecting to lose against that defense that's just how it is they they're first in the nfl in sacks with 31 but guess who's right behind them at 30 the bears um fifth fewest yards allowed per game by this defense on the year and that's after they've gone up against the likes of the rams so that's included fifth fewest yards allowed per game so this defense is coming to play but again a lot can be made about, well, who have they played? Well, who have the Bears played? Well, who cares? It's the NFL. They're going up against NFL teams. A I hate that a argument. Win. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. In terms of back to the back to the quarterback, talking about Mitch Trubisky going up against the Vikings, I don't think I would play him. No. Do I? Do I think that that means he's going to have a bad game? No. I just don't think he's going to be a guy who's going to win you a week. That that's all. So he, he almost all beat him last say. year. He almost beat he them did. last year. You know, we had we drove down at that last minute. He threw that last minute interception along the sidelines. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh he, yeah. He actually played pretty good against the Vikings both ty- or, uh, last year. Well, or Glennon played play the first game, right, against the Vikings. Right. Yes. And that, right. That so, was with nothing around him. Right. So. No, you're right. Um, well, there's a reason, gentlemen, I, I, that this game got flexed. There's a reason because oh, it's going to be amazing. Of course. Of course, yeah, and 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 here's here's how you could talk me into playing Mitch Trubisky uh, if I owned him in a fantasy league. After all, this is a fantasy football podcast. So, sure. um, the Vikings offense is in the bottom half of the league in terms of third down percentage. So their defense is great on that down. Their offense is 17th. So is that good? No. Is it bad? No. It's not terrible. But that that does mean that they're punting the ball. And that means that this Bears defense could force some short fields uh, into the hands of their offense. And that is why the Bears are scoring so many points this year. That's why they're sixth in the league in points scored at, you know, almost 30 points a game. Again, crazy, you know, pinch me, whatever. But if this defense can force some short fields, and and again, they're first in the NFL. The, The Bears are in turnover differential at plus 13. So the Bears aren't turning the ball over at a higher rate. The defense is taking the ball away at a higher rate than anybody in the league, except for the Cleveland Browns, oddly enough, have one more (laughs) takeaway than them on the air. Very weird, but um, that's a different story. So that's how you could talk me into playing Trubisky. It's it's a home game. He's on a roll. The Bears' defense gives them short fields. So... As long as those short fields turn into touchdowns for Trubisky, um, you know he can have all the yards. But we know in fantasy, if you don't score touchdowns, you know no one's no one's going to care at the end of the that's day. Right. So yep. Ryan Fitzpatrick, <laughs> yeah, hundred yards, so that's no how touchdowns you could... last week. <laughs> right. So that's how you could talk me into playing Trubisky. Um, just focusing, oddly enough, more on the Bears' defense as a reason to play Trubisky on Sunday night. But that said. I don't know if I want to, if I have another option. So I, I would put Mitch anywhere from 
14 to 20 in terms of rankings this week. Yeah. But he, you never know. You never know. So hey, that's where I got him too, man. And I, and I can see Gaines looking at me with devil eyes, saying, "Like, what are you talking about, man?" I know Gaines <laughs> has got something to say about that. Yeah. Is he there? I think you might be on mute. We, we lost him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> no, I'm just, I, had, I had to. I had to just yeah, start crying for a second. <laughs> no, um, the reason. The reason why. Um, thank you, Mr. Heckman. And the reason why I re- respectfully disagree. Um, Xavier Rhodes is not 100. percent That's one. And, right. and, and and Allen Robinson is, and we all saw that. That's two. Th- we also have four other. We have four other receivers other than Allen Robinson. And so the reason why I traded away Brady last week is because I have 100% confidence in Mitchell Trubisky, and I'm starting him in all my money leagues this week because just like the Rams, we have more than one option. And what the writers seem to forget about, Mitch can run. So you can cover who you want to cover, but he's going to get points for those rushing touchdowns too. And You're so, right. And so, and, and so with the defense being spread out, I don't believe in Minnesota's defense like that. You had the Rams score points, San Francisco score points, the, um, I mean, uh, the, the Bills score points. <laughs> I don't care. No, no, no. I, I don't know. Didn't I Nathan Peterman I, start that game too? No, it's Josh, no Allen. Josh Allen. Oh, okay. Josh Allen. Josh Adams, but what they, what Minnesota did with, uh, without without um, Griffin and what the Bears did without Mac is on opposite sides of the spectrum. And I believe our defense will give Mitchell Trubisky more opportunities. And to get fantasy points, you need reps. And so the, when, when I do starts and sits, or just respectfully, I believe Mitch will get those reps. And now you may be right. It is going to be tougher. I don't think he's going to ball out. But I do trust him to start him just because we have so many weapons. And with Adam Robinson coming back, and who who knows? What if Adam Shaheen is activated tomorrow? She could change. <laughs> so that's just, that's just one more weapon to the – that's just one more weapon. And so with the Bears having so many targets, I think it's going to be hard for Minnesota to – Cover all of that with Xavier Rose on a limited step count. I feel you, man. Yeah, the the, the way to damage uh, Minnesota is in the middle of the field with the slot receiver and the tight end, which is good news for Anthony Miller, Trey Burton, Tariq Cohen. Guys are going to do some damage on, underneath. Uh, that'll be a good matchup to watch, though, Xavier Rhodes and uh, Allen Robinson, though. That's going to be uh, a real battle. It can go either way. It can go either way. Get your popcorn well, the, ready. The matchup. The matchup that I'm watching is whoever whoever ends up matching up against Trey Waynes. And mm-hmm. you can say all you want about the athleticism and the speed of Trey Waynes, but he still, to me, doesn't look the part, um, mainly because his awareness is, isn't there on every play. I still see him failing to turn around uh, a lot like a lot like Kyle Fuller early in his career, man, where you're just yelling at him, turn around and go for the ball. That's all you got to do. You know, he's athletic enough. He's fast enough. But... Whoever's matched up on Trey Waynes, I'm eager to watch that. And yeah, you're right in the slot. They've got a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the middle of the field. Um, but to transition real quick, speaking of the middle of the field, that's where I'm worried most about Minnesota, because offensively for Minnesota, their receivers are some of the best in the NFL in terms of <clears throat> yards after the catch, and specifically on short passes. So we want to, you know, <laughs> people want to knock Trubisky or Mahomes or whoever. I mean. The amount of short passes thrown in the NFL now is 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 crazy. So you can knock just about any team. It's that close between a lot of teams. But yeah, it's a substitute with, for the running game, right? This and year, with the Vikings, with the Vikings, their receivers are so good after the catch and gaining yards. Maybe not necessarily breaking a big play, but gaining meaningful yards and moving the chains. And that's where, over the years as a Bears fan, where I've seen no matter how good the defense is, that's where they have kind of lost lost it at times is over the middle of the field a little dink and dunks and it seems at, at times they never learn and so i'm hoping they've got uh, a good plan in place for that because that's where minnesota is most lethal on offense is quick passes yards after the catch with their wideouts digs and Thielen are no joke um you may have seen my hot take a couple of weeks ago where i called Thielen the best wide receiver in the nfl at that given moment and i meant it there was yep. nobody playing better there was nobody hotter there was, you could not convince me otherwise. It doesn't when, matter. He was yeah. that good. What did you catching say that? the football? I'm, I'm hooked on a feeling. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when, when, yeah, when, you're right. When did, you, when did you write that, Ryan? When did, you, when did you say that, Ryan? You said he was their best win? It was probably a couple weeks ago when he tied the all-time streak with Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Um, and I just said, man, you know, this dude, watching him play, 
He mm-hmm. gets open against yep. anybody. He, he creates separation yep. against anybody, and he makes it look so easy. Yep. And then guess what? He catches the football. And after that, yeah, he gets yards after the catch. Deceptively he's just, fast. He's so good at all of the things you need to, to be good at to be a great receiver in the NFL. Ryan, and then you want to, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, guys. I was just going to say great receiver and a great, even better story. Uh, oh, absolutely. Talk about yeah. an undrafted guy just coming oh, in and just dominating the league. Worked his ass yeah. off on special teams for years. I mean, hard work got pays. His, got his chance. Yeah, hard work he's pays a, off. He's a favorite here, you guys. I mean, that's – you're looking around now. It used to be like all you see is, you know, Adrian Peterson jerseys. And now mm-hmm. the the most popular jersey among fans has got to be Thielen, not only because he is that good, but because people just love his story. So yeah. – um, <laughs> and I think if you asked Adam, he wouldn't tell you. But I, I wonder if he's sick of people talking about his story yet. And uh, oh, I'm sure. wishing people would people would talk more about how he is here. He, he, he has arrived. So he uh, popped up on yeah, the injury he's... report today. He's got a calf uh, injury, I think, and uh, uh, a lower back injury. So uh, something to Ooh. keep an eye on. And then Diggs, of course, sat out for the last game. Yeah, I'd, I'd be shocked if either of those guys didn't play this big division game. Oh yeah, I right. imagine they're going to suit up. But yeah, it's surprising addition for sure. Yeah, that is interesting, but I I, I agree. I, I would be shocked if they didn't play. Um, so uh, we haven't talked about him at all, but what do you guys think about Dalvin Cook? Because I think, man, from from all the talk around Minnesota, you know, living here and reading, reading up on it, he's healthy, and they are ready to, quote-unquote, I saw the word unleash used. They're ready to unleash him. Um, they're sick of having no. to be forced into the pass so much mm-hmm. um you know passing 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 and they've got the weapons to do it don't get me wrong but they're sick of you know putting it all on the shoulders of Kirk cousins and that awful offensive line um but dalvin cook is good enough and he's he's now healthy um and i just i gotta say we cannot we cannot as a defense we cannot let him slip um he might end up being the focal point of the vikings offense on sunday night to try to open up the pass yeah, and being so good against running backs this year, um, I fully expect the Bears' defense to focus on him. Yeah, uh, Minnesota has some uh, offensive line injuries. I think they lost their center for the season. Yeah, uh, going with the second string center. But uh, I saw uh, Dalvin Cook break off a really long run two weeks ago, Woo. so he looks healthy. Yeah, he, he he's, sure he's one good. of those guys now that. You know, there are some leagues I've been in that I've seen him get dropped. People just losing the faith. And that's a guy that if he's out Man. there, you got to pick him up. Or yep. you, if you have him, you got to start having the faith because I know it's been a st- tough r- start to the year for him. But you get into this stretch now where they're, he's healthy. They're going to depend on him. And if they're going to win this division, they're really going to need him. They ain't not winning this division. <laughs> <laughs> I like no, it, Gaines. Uh, I wrote about it for Bears Barroom that the uh, uh, game might come down, the division might come down to that last game between the Bears and Vikings, uh, week 17, uh, before the season in my uh, 30,000 foot view of the NFC North. It very so, well uh, could. Uh, I, I predicted the Bears would go 11 and 5 in that game and uh, felt like a fool, but now, I, now I'm feeling pretty good. That's not bad, Tooch. And real yeah, quick. Yeah, you know. Oh, keep going, man. No, Ryan, Ryan, I want to come back to you real quick, sir, because um, with the Thielen thing, because the so-called experts start on week one and week two. Thielen was only ranked number 11, 11, the 11th best on wide receiver. He was behind Devontae Adams. He was behind some jokers right now. If you go back and look at those rankings, week one, week two. And I traded for him week two and I gave him a good ass deal, a good ass deal, too. (laughs) A good ass deal because I got I got him week two. I think I tr- I got him for Philip Lindsay and Broncos defense. That week two, worked out really well for you. Me. Who made yeah. that trade? Yeah, that wasn't in our league, was it? <laughs> no, no, no. Was, I don't no. think the commission would have let that one go I, through. No, I'll tell you <laughs> right now, I wouldn't have let that through. I mean, because because at that because at that time everybody was feeling Lindsay. And the guy, he had Michael Thomas and stuff, so he was like fine. Oh whatever. my gosh! But he but, just but, traded but, away his title. Yeah. Exactly, but but he but I never trade within my division anyway. But um, he 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 went to Lindsay. I said, sure, let me get Thielen. <laughs> I said, sure. And so, but I said that to say, even the experts didn't see that coming. But like I know Kirk Cousins here from here in D.C. 
And so I knew how when he when he finds a connection with somebody, that's the guy oh, yeah. you're gonna get because Kurt Kurt is gonna throw that corner around. Oh, it's yeah. just like when Jamison Crowder got hot two years ago, man. Exactly. Kirk was trying, that was Kirk's man. And you, I mean, Jamison won some leagues for people that year because yeah, he was a waiver pickup. <laughs> he was yeah. a waiver pickup. He was on nobody's was, radar at all. It was Deshaun year. Jackson and Pierre Garcon. Yeah. And, you know, he was the third guy, but he was in that slot and Kirk found comfort. And the rest is history, man. Mm-hmm. Slot receivers doing most of the damage this year in uh, the NFL for fantasy. Uh, the Adam Thielen's numbers, I went back and looked at them before the show. <laughs> it's like it's like 20, 30, per, this is per week, 25, 26. 20, you know, his last game he played, he had like 12 or 13 points. But the whole year he's been 20, 20 to 35 every week. And that's yeah, just I'll tell, incredible. I'll tell you what, man, a little, little humble brag. I, I'm in a league with some friends, a keeper league. And last year I drafted Gurley in the third, and I drafted Thielen in the 11th, and I kept both of them for their cool. rounds this year. Uh, it's a two-quarterback league, so it's a, it's a pretty fun league. And this year my quarterbacks have been Roethlisberger wow. and Matt Ryan. So if I don't nice. win a championship, um, and, and A.J. Green was my, uh, was my first pick um, after all the keepers were taken. So I've got A.J. Green, too, hoping he comes back. But, man – Feeling, looking at him and and Gurley in that lineup every week, Man, just wondering how is, how is good. how is anybody going to beat him? So yeah. yeah, love feeling, love his story, love watching him play. Man, good player. But yeah. right, I, I can't start. I'm not starting feeling this week. I love him, but I'm I'm not starting this week, bro. You're uh, not tough, starting man. feeling. See, so I, 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 I can't. can't root against the Bears. Yeah, I will That's say I will say I haven't played a running back against the Bears defense all year long. Um, and the league where I have Thielen, I'm playing Thielen against the Bears. But I'll say this: he's the only player that I would play against the Bears. I'm, he's the only yeah, player. I'm with you there. I I'm wouldn't good. play. I wouldn't play Diggs. I wouldn't play Cook. I for sure wouldn't play Cousins. Uh, I don't think the Vikings are going to score 20 points. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely not Kyle Rudolph, man. That guy fell off the face of the earth. Man, he's one guy that'll surprise you every once in a while, and you'll go, "Oh wait, maybe I should play him." Yeah, and then you, you pick know, him once up every, and then you start him, games. and he does nothing. <laughs> yeah, once every six that, games, man. Exactly what happens. Yeah, well, Chicago number four overall defense, Minnesota number five overall defense in yards per game, but Chicago only allowing nineteen point four points per game. Minnesota twenty two point seven. Of course, Minnesota had some blow up games against him, right. but uh, this should be. You know, like Ryan said, a lower scoring game. Yeah, I think in a game like this, uh, it's pretty simple for the Bears. If we win the turnover battle, we win the game. That's it. Mm-hmm. If the Bears win the turnover battle, they will win this game uh, because, uh, first of all, they've been great scoring off turnovers. They lead the league with most points off turnovers at 84. Um, and if they if they can turn the ball over from the Vikings, we've seen – how quickly Kirk Cousins will fall apart after mm-hmm. giving up the ball. Yep. So as soon as Cousins sees sees him himself turn the ball over, as soon as he sees the defense take the ball away from his offense, uh, if that team goes and scores and does it again, the game is essentially over. Mm. Yep. Why did Kirk struggle against the Lions? That's a good that's question. Weird. That, yeah. That's a- that, yeah. That's a great question. Because uh, he's inconsistent. Let's let's leave it at that. <laughs> so, so, different, so different Lions so, team. So, 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 so let's think about that. I mean, he struggled against the Lions, who has a good passing. But I mean, yeah, yeah Diggs was out. Diggs was out. Maybe Diggs was Diggs was out. Was that maybe? I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe that's it. But still, he he didn't have two hundred yards passing for the first time in five weeks against the Lions team is that Mitch just rolled on. Yeah. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, that yeah. offensive line, though, man, I mean, he's dealing <laughs> he's dealing with the same thing that he dealt with in Washington. And I got to give the man credit because before he came to Minnesota, you're looking at three straight years where he's essentially top six in most statistical categories for a quarterback. Yeah, and you've got to give him props uh, because last year the Redskins were bringing guys off the street essentially late in the season to play offensive line for them. And this year, you know, he thought coming into Minnesota it'd be different, but it's turning out not to be so different. Where they're banged up, they're not good, and he's under pressure quite a bit. So, 
You know, it, these are NFL players. It doesn't matter what defense you're going up against. If your offensive line is letting people through, you know, anybody can go sack the quarterback. So that line, that line has to shore up real quick um, because they're in for it on Sunday night. And is it fair to say the Bears have the better offensive line? Oh, for sure. And that therefore, I feel like Mitchell have the better game. I he feel very like well could. He very I, well I, could. I feel, I feel like the variables are there. I'll say this, gentlemen. I don't think this is going to be a fantasy gold game by any means. I think there's going to be nope. limited oh, yeah. amount of points scored in this game. This is the kind of game that when it comes to fantasy, I try to avoid it because there's not going to be a lot of points. You're looking at starting the defenses in this game. I'd say besides that and Thielen and mm, it depends which Bears running back you want to start. Probably Tariq, if I had to say anything, and Allen Robinson. And you're probably not going to bench Trey Burton, but that's Guys, it. Yo! Dude, uh, that, dude, <laughs> how, you, you're right. You're right, bro. You're right. You're right, but don't forget Jordan Howard ripped as a new asshole last year, the other the other year when they was ranked the number one defense when they was undefeated. That was Jordan Howard that did that shit. That was also John Fox saying, "Hey, go out there and run the ball, then run it again, right. and run but it let, again, but, and then but, run it again." So. You're right, but let's. That, but he he's capable. That's all I'm saying. I'm he's, capable. <laughs> he's capable. He's capable. He's capable, but his role his role has definitely changed. True. He's capable, you're right. But his role right. has definitely right. changed. Right. So. And you know he could uh, yeah, get let, two yeah. goal he took could get two goal line carries and a touchdown. But but that <laughs> his he might have twelve fantasy points or twelve point two rush for two yards. Both oh. yards are one carry. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I tend right. to agree though. I, I don't really want to start anybody in this game other than Thielen and um, and and, 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 and honestly the Bears defense. I don't even know if I want to start the Vikings defense because I think the Bears will win this game, um, and I, I don't see them turning the ball over. Uh, an absurd amount because they just haven't done that all year. Yeah. Anthony Anthony Miller could be a sleeper, guys. He yeah. could be a sleeper because you were just talking about the awareness of the DBs. Well, who's running better routes than Anthony Miller right now? You're right. That's a good call. Because if he, if his back is not looking towards the ball, well, Anthony Miller's on point. That fact that Mitch throws the ball, he's he's like five yards away from anybody else. That's the truth. And here's the thing: I, I think I think he'll be really valuable. On a lot of those quick routes, especially early in early in the game, I think for the Bears' offense to be successful, that that Vikings defensive line is nasty. I mean, they are downright nasty. Yeah. They are good. Yeah. Uh, and so protect Mitch, obviously. But I think a get the ball out of his hand quickly, and b just like a shooter in basketball, let him get let him get in a rhythm. Short, quick passes yes. to guys like Miller, Burton, even Cohen, uh, but just rip them off. You know, one after another, real quick. See those balls get caught, and then uh, open things up a little bit, maybe for the run game. So, but I think that's got to be priority number one right away offensively is protecting Mitch and, and getting those quick passes out there. A lot like we saw uh, the Packers early on this season, kind of make Khalil Mack almost a, a, a non-factor in the second half, which is quick pass after quick pass. Because if you're getting the rid of the ball that quickly, yeah. defenses can't really do much. Yep, sure. And and I know we've we've had you on for a little while, Ryan, but I know we also wanted to get your thoughts on other fantasy players for this week. Sure. So what yeah. what do you got for a couple starts and, and sits going into this weekend? Okay, so this could completely blow up in my face, but <laughs> but um, bum bum bum. I, I've got. I've got two somewhat shocking starts. I mean, I, you, you might be able to call them questionable or shocking. Um, the first one is Ben Roethlisberger. Hey, this I love week, it. this week I am starting Ben Roethlisberger against the Jacksonville Jaguars on the road. Yeah. Um, up until this season, you've kind of heard of the uh, the the home and road splits with with Big Ben. Yeah. And uh, it just hasn't necessarily panned out that way this year. Uh, what I've learned having him on one of my teams is I've been burned by sitting him this year, and I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to go to the waiver wire to try to pick up another guy. He's been great this year for the most part. And do you think he doesn't remember last year's game against the Jaguars? Yeah. You think that's maybe mm. in the back of his head a little bit? Oh, he remembers. He remembers. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the game – where he said, maybe I just don't have it anymore, mm -hmm. and then went on to win 
probably anybody that had him a championship last year because he went on a tear. He did. Yeah. So I'm starting Ben Roethlisberger this year, or this year, this week. All um, right. And my other start that is not necessarily uh, a sexy start, and I still kind of cringe when I put him in a lineup, uh, whether it's daily or um, you know, a, a fantasy league like like actually our league. Uh, I'm starting him this week, and that is Amari Cooper. Hey, that, the Cowboys yep. have a great schedule the rest of the way. Yeah, I'm I'm starting Amari Cooper. Um, even though just saying his name, hearing his name, you're like, Ugh, um, I don't know. Uh, but the fact is, he's getting peppered with targets early yeah. and often by Dak Prescott. Uh, He's looked, he's looked just fine. So I think uh, Dallas knows they paid up. They yep. paid a premium. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, obviously, they don't want to make Jerry look like an idiot. Otherwise, somebody's getting fired. <laughs> and uh, I'm starting Amari Cooper against a really, really bad Atlanta Falcons defense. Oh yeah, and and, and I actually talked about it in my in my fan, in my fantasy article on the Bears Barroom when they traded for Amari Cooper, and it's the Jerry Jones factor. When Jerry Jones trades for somebody, they're going to feature that guy. They're going to get him oh, yeah. the ball early mm-hmm. and often. And that's been the yep. case, and I think it's going to be the case the rest of the year. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree. So right. we got two starts out, Ed. Do you have, do you have any sits for us? Um, I do. So my first sit is, uh, is a guy that I really want to buy into, and it's a team's philosophy that I really want to buy into, the Seahawks. Uh, but this week... I'm started. Or I'm I'm sitting. Excuse me. I'm sitting. Chris Carson. Uh, he's playing, according to Pete Carroll. But if we've learned anything about this Seahawks backfield, it's that we know nothing about this Seahawks backfield. <laughs> the Pete <Yeah>. Carroll effect. <laughs> um, they're they're running the ball a whole heck of a lot, but I mean there hasn't been one specific running back for more than what, two games in a row that you've been like, oh, he's the guy. Right. I mean, last week Rashad Penny ripped off a big run. And yeah. One over they're talking yards, about too. featuring him even more. So you have three guys that could potentially be used. And where when there's three guys that are going to get the ball in their hands, whether it's four times or 14 times, and you don't really know which one, I, I want no part of it. I'm not, I'm not going to start Chris Carson. Amen, man. I'm, I'm with you. The, the Seahawks backfield has been a mess. We've been talking about it all year on Fantasy Football Goon. I'm avoiding that backfield for the time being. But you got to talk about Russell Wilson and what that offense is doing. It's been pretty impressive. Yep. It, yeah. it has been. I mean, they've been running the ball a lot. And, um, you know, Russell is still Russell's still a good quarterback. So, uh but in terms of the backfield, I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. I I don't know how comfortable I am starting a lot of Seahawks, um, especially the the. Believe it or not, I mean, I don't know how many how many people know this, but the Packers are one of the teams that are tied for the lead in in the NFL with with 31 sacks. Um, so their defensive line has ramped it up a little bit, and they're fighting for their lives right now in this game. I just don't know. Uh, the backfield is hands off for me. Um, I think I'm still comfortable playing Russell, but aside from that, I don't know. I don't know if I'm comfortable playing any other Seahawks, honestly. Yeah, it's 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 a tough call for sure, and uh, definitely a good Thursday night game tomorrow. Though uh, we said yeah. last week, oh, it's going to be the best Thursday night game, and it was a blowout. This week, mm-hmm. I think we got a good game coming. There's one guy, Joe, a uh, guy I, I targeted in the draft, didn't get him. I was Tyler Lockett has scored in seven of nine games. Yeah, uh, a lot yeah. of deep speed there. Russell Wilson starting to heat up. Uh, you know, Packers secondary. You know, a, l- a little bit down right now. Might be a, a sneaky start, Tyler Lockett, to uh, someone to watch. Well, didn't he, he have that touchdown in the fail Mary one. game too? <laughs> right, that was Tyler Lockett, wasn't it? I believe uh, I think, so. I believe so. Yeah. The rematch. Yeah. He definitely could be a sneaky play. Um, 
Th that's a great point. You know, the Packers secondary right now, especially at safety. Man, gee, I wonder why they're so thin at safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He could be a sneaky play. Um, but just personally and, and kind of just a gut feeling, I don't want to play any Seahawks other than Wilson. So Agreed. Do you got any other sits for us, Ryan? Um... It's you okay know, if you don't. No, so I have one, and and again, this could blow up in my face too. But I, I don't know if I am comfortable enough to start Mark Ingram, um, especially you know, Mark Ingram owners right now are kind of wishing and hoping and wishing and hoping um, that their gamble, you know, drafting him probably anywhere between the fourth and the sixth round, depending on uh, league size. They're hoping that that finally pays off, and and they almost feel like they have to start him because of the investment they made, especially if they've hung on to him, or even vice versa, the, the people that have traded for him. Um, and that that Eagles front seven is still good. They still have a lot of players there that are healthy, that are playing, that are playing well. And I still believe that the Eagles um, are going to be in the mix for a wild card spot before it's all said and done. Uh, and that begins with a huge game against the Saints. So uh, I don't know if I want to start Mark Ingram, especially because of the fact that <laughs> we know Alvin Kamara is going to get a lot of touches. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm 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 probably hands off of Mark Ingram this week. Hey man, I can see that. I mean, he's not the guy there. I mean, our guy Jeff Schwartz talked about this a few weeks ago, saying that you know, you know. He comes back in. He's taking some carries away from Kamara. Like, what do you guys think about that split? And, and Tuch and I both said Kamara's still going to be the guy, and he has been. But, yeah. you know, he has not delivered. In, 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 by he, I'm talking about Ingram. He has not really delivered because he's, he's had some games, but they're not using him the way that they used to. Well, that's what happens yeah. when you get suspended. When you get suspended and you fuck up, excuse my language, and the rookie gets to show what he can do. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he's a backup. Joe, he is a backup. is a backup. A good backup, but, you know, he's a backup. But Kamara is a game breaker. And that Saints team is I, mighty good, gentlemen. Hey, Ryan, quick question. Yeah. When do you, do, do you, do you wait and see after this next two games, the Saints and the Giants to decide to bench Alshon or not? Because he hasn't been looking the same at all, or is it more wins? But we thought, we thought Tate was going to help, but I didn't see that last week. Too much, and that that tape was going to be that much of an impact. But Alshon is on my bench chilling. I think that's a good place for him right now. But I kind of want to put him in a couple dailies because it's against the Saints. Yeah, great question. I would I would take the chance and and start Alshon this week if he was on my roster. Um, yeah, me, me too. I think what you saw when what you saw when um, when Carson looked for him early when he came back and he had that two touchdown game. I don't think that was a fluke um, over the next few games after that. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I know that Jeffrey got a lot more targets than we thought he would. Um, Nelson Aguilar kind of became an afterthought. Uh, we thought Golden Tate would be a, a big part. I mean, he, he just got there, so. Yeah. But. Zach Ertz, yeah, the number one receiver over there. No doubt. He is, absolutely. And, and they're using Goddard more, too. Uh, he's become a factor. But I still believe that there is the chemistry there between Wentz and Alshon. Um, there's a reason they extended him. He is healthy. And I, I can't I can't bench Alshon right now. Unless you've got two top 15 guys on your roster, I would still play him, especially against the Saints. Like you said, it's, it's tempting. Yeah. There's going to be points scored. So I, I would have a hard time well, benching Alshon. Well, well, I'm glad you said that. Let me let me let me give you the scenario then. <laughs> let me give you the scenario. <laughs> it, that maybe this will help you. Would you would you start Alshon over Allen um Allen Robinson, Tyler Boyd, Antonio Brown? Over Robinson. Brown. I, I, never, no, never I, I would, sit Brown. Yeah, you never sit Brown. Um, I, I would start him over Tyler Boyd. Honestly, right now really? we yeah. Me yeah. Too. Really? Yep, 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 100%. Uh, Boyd is a guy that we thought would would really benefit from A.J. Green's absence. Now, it, A.J. Green all of a sudden became questionable today, which is weird because we thought he was going to be out till December. Mm -hmm. But if A.J. Green somehow plays, 
than, 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 than play Boyd. Boyd. Yeah. But Boyd yeah. has has been at his best with AJ Green on the field because he's the number two guy. He's not Boyd. the go to guy. Yeah, we saw it and last week. When Boyd's the only guy that uh, that Dalton's throwing to, I mean, they don't really have anything else. Don't even mm-hmm. talk about John Ross. My goodness. Um, yeah, brutal. No offense. Tyler Croft, no Tyler Eifert. And we thought CJ Ozama was going to be a guy that Dalton would look to, but that that hasn't really even panned out. That offense is no. kind of struggling, and it's the Joe Mixon show. So I'm not comfortable playing Boyd right now, and I would most certainly start Alshon over Boyd if that's the decision you're up against. Allen Robinson up until last week, would be riding my bench if I owned any Allen Robinson he, shares. He, he was all year long. <laughs> He's available and in almost all my leagues right now. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's crazy. See, yeah, that's he's... crazy. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Um, but because of the showing we saw last week, it looks like um, it looks like he's healthy. It looks like he and Mitch have, have a connection. And I think I think Nagy is is being a lot smarter with his play calling where he's trying to get the ball more to Robinson and Miller. Because he knows that those are the two best receivers he has on the team. They're getting so, it done. Yeah, and they're getting it done. Robinson looked great last week. So I would definitely start Robinson and I would start Brown. Obviously, you never bench Brown. Damn right. Um, right. Yep. But I would play Alshon over Boyd. Yeah. Makes sense. It, Especially with the Saints matchup. It, yeah, yeah every, you got a it, lot of points coming your way in that game, it, man. Or yeah, should. It, you should. The Saints put up a lot of points, and that's going to put Philadelphia into the passing you know, mode. Because uh, they're going to be playing catch up with Nate. Philadelphia doesn't really have a running game. You know? No, they, no they, not they, at all. They, they, they throw. You know, Carson Wentz over 300 yards last week. Now that if you watch the game, Nelson Aguilar had a, had an had an okay day, but you know came down hard, had to leave the game. He had a stinger, and uh, uh, Golden Tate still not up to speed. And that's why I would start Alshon Jeffrey. You know, he's the number one dog over there, aside from Ertz. The Ertz, Ertz or Travis Kelsey? Who'd you guys rather have? Oh God, I got Kelsey, Kelsey all league. I got Kelsey in every league. I got Kelsey. Kelsey. I, I would take That's Kelsey over Ertz any day it's a, because it's a you tough know, question, but yeah, it it's it is a really tough question. They're both phenomenal, but Kelsey's role on a week to week basis, I mean. Higher seed than Kelsey, but Ertz, so Ertz, much, Ertz, no problem putting ten catches up on the board. You know, we saw it last week. You know, he, right? He's the focal point, also. But yeah, Kelsey a lot more speed. Can I answer that question with both? I'll take both. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One in tight end and one in the flex, like right there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, this is kind of off topic, but one thing I wanted to to bring to I don't know what you guys have touched on, but this is kind of the point in time where if you're looking like a playoff team in fantasy. Um, I would go out and get, I've got a list here, I would go out and get guys that are on the waiver wire uh, like Josh Adams. Um, I would go out and get, if Giovanni Bernard is available, get him right now as you are listening to this. Got him already, uh, if, baby. Oh, yeah. If if Royce Freeman is somehow available, um, go get him. Uh, if TJ Yeldon is available, go get him. Uh, <clears throat> you've got these guys, if you're looking at uh, making a deep playoff run, if, God forbid, the starters went down, you know yeah. that these guys are going to have a role. TJ Yeldon has a role regardless. I mean, go get him. If he's out there, he's catching passes. Um, but you have guys like that. And Jamal Williams with the Packers, now that Montgomery's gone, if something happens to Aaron Jones. Um, Spencer Ware, another guy, had a touchdown Spencer last Ware. Week. Yep. Absolutely. You've got these offenses like um, the Pittsburgh. If something happened to Connor, you want to get Samuels. Yeah. Yeah. Go out there Just right now if that. you have – if you have a bench spot and find one of those guys that uh, you can throw on your bench, because if something happens to the other guy, you just struck a gold mine. And those are the yeah. kind of moves that'll win you your league. And you have to think about that now because playoffs are right around the corner. We're in week 11 guys. Can you believe it? Yep. It's that far into the season. And right before you came on, Ryan, we were actually talking about strength of schedule during the playoffs. So we yeah. talked about first with the Ravens, just having a layup of a schedule. Um, I'll, I'll read it off to you real quick. Cincinnati, Oakland, Atlanta, Kansas City, Tampa Bay, L.A. Chargers. Pretty good. Then we followed it up talking about the Cleveland Browns. Wait, wait, hold on. Did you talk about Lamar Jackson? Yes. Yeah. Did you talk about, okay, good. <laughs> woof, wow. If he ends up getting a start and he doesn't look back, there's a bench spot right there. If you got an open bench spot, he might be worth a flyer. Yeah, yeah nothing. Yeah. 
yeah, he's he's going to be dangerous if he gets an opportunity because that Ravens defense is good and that offense could be really good, especially the with Saints, that schedule. Uh, easy schedule. You know, if you look at the Saints schedule. Yeah, I was actually just going to bring that up too. So, so the Saints schedule starting this week, you got Cincinnati, Philadelphia. I'm sorry, starting this week, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Dallas, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Pittsburgh. So yeah. that's really favorable for the Saints as well. Saints and, could be 15 and one at the end of the season, really. They, I mean, they really could be. The only game they would have lost is to the Buccaneers, but we still got some football yeah. to play. Yeah, they're a good team. But uh, Ryan was just talking about the Cowboys a little while ago. I mean, they have a really great schedule as well. The rest yeah. of the day, you're yep. talking Atlanta, Washington, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Indianapolis, Tampa Bay. So that's another. T- you want to target Cowboys if you're maybe if you're trying to make some last minute trades. The deadline's usually around Thanksgiving in fantasy, so that's coming up. You know, you want to target your Cowboys. You want to target your your Ravens. Uh, you even want to talk about the, the Panthers here. The Panthers got a nice, pretty good schedule too. I know they have, yeah. they have Detroit, Seattle, Tampa Bay, Cleveland, New Orleans, Atlanta. So those are the yeah. kind of matchups that you want during your playoffs and your championship game. Yep. Yeah, and the thing about uh, playoff strength of schedule too, um, this is not something I have in front of me. Maybe you guys do, but go out there and look ahead to the next few weeks and again it's it's all about if you've got if you've got a bench spot to burn or if you're ch- trying to build towards you know the playoffs look at defense as a week ahead of time mm-hmm. yeah cuz if you do that and you're and you're looking at for example if you can get each week if you can get uh, a, a team that plays either the raiders yep. the cardinals <laughs> or the bills you should be just fine at defense. Yeah. Fantasy defenses haven't been great this year. It's no. been kind of a toss-up. It's been a weird year with a lot more scoring. Um, you're talking about the Bears are, are what, fourth, sixth, did you say, in, in, in points per game with 19? Yeah. So, I mean, that means, uh, like, one of the top defenses in the league are, are giving up 20 points a game. Yeah. So, fantasy defenses have not been great, but if you target a team over the next few weeks to have on your bench – locked and loaded that are playing one of those three teams, you're in good shape. Yeah, we actually talked about this on uh, Tailgate, I think, Joe. Yeah, we, we did. Talked about, uh, I think Airjair asked us if we were streaming defenses. <laughs> I've been mm-hmm. streaming a defense every week. I'm just dropping oh, yeah. one a week and picking yep. up who I think who I like in this matchup. I just picked up the Cardinals. I think they're playing the Raiders this week. So, yep. Yeah. You know, at home, home against Chucky. Yeah, so. and, and- – <laughs> And we talked a little bit about the point, a lot more points this year, and that's because of the rule changes, guys. They're protecting the quarterback. Yeah. They have time to throw. I mean, it it's going to affect fantasy for years to come, these new rules. Like, I know some people took the Jags defense early on, and it hasn't done jack for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, some people drafted them. You know, usually you don't see a defense drafted into the last two rounds, and some people drafted them in single-digit rounds. Yeah. I got the Bears defense in the fifth round. Damn right. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, the game. so you're so you are still a lunatic, but you are a smart lunatic. Not I, 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 I foresaw this, man. I foresaw this. I, I saw this happening. And it you, worked out. And you drafted you them before a they crazy got Mac. Fanboy. Yes, before yeah. they got Mac. Yes. Yeah, you are you are a crazy psychopathic <laughs> fanboy that just happened to have a plan that worked out. Hey, brother, that's what we do. And his fantasy <laughs> team is do. competing. It's going to make a playoff run, right, Gaines? Yes, sir. First place in all my money leagues. Bring in the fire, man. I love it. Yeah. But, Ryan, man, it's been absolutely awesome having you on. Uh, why don't you tell yeah. people where they could find you on Twitter and where they can check out all of your great work? Hey, thanks, guys. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, on Twitter, um, I love interacting with you guys. Uh, you can follow me at Ryan Heckman FS, as in fan sided, which is uh, the organization that I am with and I represent. I, I co run um, the Windy City. It is a Chicago sports website where we uh, do our best to get you coverage on all Chicago sports. So we've got a great team of writers over there. Um, that's where you can find not only my work, but my team's work. We do some good stuff over there. Like I said, you can follow me on Twitter at Ryan Heckman FS. I'd love to follow you back and just talk. You know, bears, but you know, talk NFL, talk fantasy. That's that's kind of where my my main passion lies in, in the sports world. So go follow me, and um, uh, looking forward to chatting it up with you guys. Oh man, All it's right. been absolutely awesome having you on. 
Yeah, man. You know, we, yeah, we, we have you. a lot of fun in our fantasy in the barroom fantasy league. Yeah. And, uh, it's yep. coming down to the wire, man. It's going to be a fun end of the year for sure. Yeah, we don't. We yeah, have a lot of teams bunched up. A lot of teams uh, kind of with good, you know, up, up towards the top in the barroom league. You know, from like five and four to seven and two or something, right, Joe? Or six, six and four to eight, eight and two. I think we're all bunched up there. It's all over the map, and eight teams make the playoffs. Yeah. So it's it's anybody's game. Yeah. But Ryan, be a fun finish. Yes, it will be. Ryan, again, thank you for joining us, man. Everyone, make sure you yeah. give him a follow. We yeah. appreciate all the truth you brought tonight, man, and it brought a lot of fire and fantasy and sports love, and that's what we're talking about here, man. So thanks again for joining us, and we'd love to have you on again at some point in the future. Absolutely, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Happy right, you. Thank you, man. <laughs> Take care, Ryan. All right. See ya. Later. Oh, good stuff. Thanks again to yeah. Ryan Heckman yes. for joining us. Absolutely great guest. Lit yeah. it up, talking about Bears Vikings, yep. fantasy, dropping some knowledge, man, having having a great conversation, guys. Man, I absolutely love that. Gains and Tooch, yeah. man. This has been so fun. This is a great show. And and we're and we still got a lot of show left. I know we got know. A, we got a couple yeah. of And I know I, I know this is a family show, man, so sorry for the language, guys. I just feel like the game is tomorrow. And so I just <laughs> I'm just like excited, so man, my fault. Hey man, I've, it's all right. It's we 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 swear periodically, man. Joe, Joe can uh, bleep it out, you know. Later yeah, later, if we have to. <laughs> I'm glad we're not live. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Throw, throw, throw a couple in. Throw a couple um sound effects in there. Yeah, a little uh, uh, whistle <laughs> or uh, uh, please uh, raspberry. <laughs> it's all right. I'll see if I can find it later. If not, if not, I'm sure people have heard the word "fuck" before. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. But, you know, we talked through the rest of the strength of schedule with Ryan, so that was great. We got to get through that segment there. Yeah. You know, we even talked about, you know, the trade deadline and teams that we want to target. But, you know, we haven't really talked much about this week's games coming up, guys. So what do you say we do yeah. a quick run-through of this week's games? Real you know, quick, we, we, won't, we won't go too detailed on each one, but we'll just tap through it. We'll get yeah. a pick with the spread and just kind of work our way through. So we got a good one tomorrow night, boys. We got Thursday night football. Yeah. Packers, Seahawks. Packers got to go down and play against the Seahawks at home. That's a rough task right there. And because of that, the Seahawks are two and a half point favorites at home. Man, this has been a tough one for me to pick, man. I I know you guys aren't going to like it, but I think I'm going to take the Packers plus two and a half. I just have a feeling that they're going to be able to pull this game off. Uh I'm going to take the Seahawks at home. I I know... uh... It's tough. I know that this is a tough game to call, Joe. These these teams have played each other, you know, a lot recently in recent years. You know, they have. But uh, the Seahawks have been hot. Uh, Packers are struggling a little bit, but uh, you know, it depends. Aaron Jones over a hundred yards, Joe, and uh, that was my Seahawks. start of the week last yeah. week, John. Yeah, yeah, it really paid off too. Two touchdowns over a hundred yards. Big day. Uh, I, I just. Uh, I, I just think Seattle's a hotter team right now. They'll probably lose, though, as soon as I say that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I just don't like the uh, the uh, the matchup for Green Bay going in the, to Seattle this week. Yeah, poor Green Bay. Sorry, sorry, you got a tough game. <laughs> sorry, you got a tough game. <laughs> Who you got, Gaines? Oh, I'm, I'm going with Seattle, but, 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 but really, because I just feel like I love the fact that the Packers be having these tough games. I just love this, man. And you you can't count out the 12th man. Um, yeah. And I don't believe I, – I, it's funny now that I know to raise the Packers. I would look at some a, a couple of Seattle streaming options if you want a cheap options on DK or anything like that because the Packers' defense it hasn't been – it's not. It's, 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 yeah. super, it's super, super suspect. And Russell Wilson can scramble and throw the ball deep whenever he wants to. So, hell yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, root for the Seattle, and I'm thinking yeah, Seattle definitely can get this game win. Yeah, and I think DraftKings, like, like we mentioned earlier, you got to look at Russell Wilson. You got to look at Tyler Lockett. These are guys you're going to get yeah. on the cheap. And then, you know, Aaron Jones again. I'm going to say it again. This guy is a top 10 running back the rest of the season. And if you have him, you got to fire him up. I mean, this kid is going to help you win your league. So, Aaron Jones again is a start for me. And yeah. He's not going to be my start of the week because I can't do it three week three weeks in a row. <laughs> but uh, you, you can run on Seattle. I mean, they're giving up. Oh, both teams giving up about 120 yards per uh, game. I know that. I'm telling you, you're definitely yeah. starting him. But he's not going to be my start of the week just because I can't have the same guy three weeks in a row. Yeah. yeah but it's the 
The we, pass defense for Seattle, sure. that's pretty good. Yeah, so we touched on this game. Let's move on to yeah. the next one here. Dallas going down to play the Falcons in Atlanta. Atlanta at home, three-point favorites against the Cowboys. Man, the Falcons aren't good this year, man, and the Cowboys aren't all that much better, but the Cowboys have a good defense. So I'm going to take the Cowboys plus three here on the road. Falcons aren't good, and Amari Cooper is starting to look good. And especially if you have him, you're probably going to give him a start against this Falcons defense because they're terrible. Uh, Gaines, who do you got in this game? I'm going to take I'm going to take um, both teams are suspect. One yep. just beat the Redskins. One just beat a first place Redskins. Then a, it, you beat the first place Redskins, then you lose to the Browns, right? Yeah. And then and then the Cowboys it's, it's up and down. But I'm going to go ahead and take the better quarterback and that's Matt, and that's Matt Ryan. Definitely the better quarterback. I can't argue with that. Two, who do you got in this game? Oh, this is a tough, another tough one. I think I'm going to take the home team, but uh, I think it'll be real close. So uh, I, I just uh, – Dallas is hot, though. But, you know, I mean, they, they go and lose to Washington, who, who Atlanta won, and then Dallas beats the crap out of Philadelphia, the world champs. Uh, so I, I, just, I have a hard time. I'll, I'll just stick with Matt Ryan, you know, also. Uh, I, I don't like the pick either. I Dallas, those two, those linebackers of Dallas are really good. I don't know if you guys have watched the young guys. J- Jalen Smith and Leighton Vanderesh. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, man. I, I, I Atlanta's not going to be able to run. They're going to have to pass. So it's a great Matt Ryan start. Uh, yeah, I. Hey, but Dallas that, could easily win this game. But Dallas is. You guys have been noticed. I can't. Who I can't remember who it was against. But they've been burning out. Tennessee. They, they, Dallas defense, they start fast. Yes, but they've they do. Been burnt, they've been running out of gas, guys, in the second half, man. Well, you know why, Gaines? Yeah. It's because yeah. they're on the field the entire game. There you go. And and if they had an offense, this team would be really good. And maybe they're getting there, but it's going to take a little bit longer, I think. Yeah. But and Vic, Be- Vic Beasley and um and, and Irvin coming and Kerman, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so we, we, you, I'm the only guy that's taking the Cowboys here, but I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. Let's move into the next one. Carolina Panthers got to go down to play the Lions in Detroit. And the Panthers are four-point favorites on the road. I don't see any way I can't take the Panthers here. They're just playing better <laughs> football right now, man. The Lions seem to be lost at sea. Um, Cam Newton heating up this team, heating up as a whole. I mean, Christian McCaffrey has been an absolute beast this year. Uh, I'm taking the Panthers all day. It's four-point favorites. Even if they're on the road, I don't care. Toot, you on board with that? I know you love McCaffrey. I'm going to take the Panthers, too. I don't like it, but uh, you know, I hate going against a home dog. But uh, like you said, Detroit just not playing well. Yeah, they're, they're not playing well at all. And I have a feeling I know what Gaines is going to say, but Gaines, who do you got? I, I got the Panthers, but for football purposes. <laughs> for football purposes. Yeah. Because that's, it's two teams going two different directions. Cam Newton's having a career year. Um, Nerf Turner then taught him how to throw the ball. and look, <laughs> Not throw the ball, excuse me, respectfully. Just out of the, shot, out of the shotgun. Okay. Isn't that that same boring Carolina offense with this two tight end set and one wide receiver? They're actually opening up a little bit. You got Curtis Samuel down there. And then the Lions just lost. And so you got two teams going two different directions. I'm, I'm agreeing with you there, man. And there are some fantasy starts, though, in this game, though. I mean, on, on, on the Panthers, obviously you're rolling with Cam, McCaffrey, Funches starting to emerge out of the shadows, Greg Olson getting healthy again. Even the Lions side of the ball, I mean, Golden Tate's gone, but Kenny Galladay is making some incredible catches now that he's basically the number one guy. And then Carrion Johnson is starting to emerge as a viable running back, and this isn't a terrible matchup. The Panthers are pretty good against the run, but Johnson's catching passes, too, so... Those are the guys that I'd recommend fantasy-wise in this game. But we're all on the same page. We're taking the Panthers. The next one I think is a little tougher to call here. Uh, the Titans got to go down to play the Colts in Indianapolis. The Colts are getting red hot. Andrew Luck is finally back to his old ways. But this Titans defense, man, they, they get better every single week. The Colts are a one-point favorite at home. I mean, that's basically a straight-up pick em game. Uh, I'm going to go with the home team, though. I think the Colts are playing great ball. That defense has been decent for the Colts, uh, decent enough to, to keep things moving, and we all know that Titans offense isn't going to put up 30 points every week. So I'm taking the Colts here. Gaines, who you got in this one? Man, this is a tough one. This is a it's tough, tough. one. Yeah. This is a, this is a good football game to watch. Yes, it is. 
because I'm actually curious. Rabel has been the coaching man. I mean, he didn't already beat the Patriots, and then he took care of Dallas, who's been kind of half, and then they just who they just waxed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the. St- I'm gonna go ahead and take Tennessee. The um, the, the I can't remember his name, he, but he let the he let the NFL interceptions last year. Andrew Luck those interceptions. So he does. And I don't know. I mean, the off you, you want to go Colts because it's, 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 it looks it looks it, but I don't know if I'm a, yeah. I wouldn't mind taking. I'm taking the Titans. I'll take the Titans. Yeah, man, it's a tough one. It's a tough one to call. And uh, Tooch, who you got in this one, man? This is a real tough one to call for sure. It is. I hate this game. I'm taking the Titans, though. Like I said, they only give up 16.8 points a game. Uh, they're they're a good defense. Mariota's starting to get hot. Uh, Colts struggle on the outside. I love Corey Davis in this game. Uh, you know, he's starting to emerge. Had a great game against the Patriots. I think I talked about it on tailgate about how he, how he uh, beat up on the Patriots in the playoffs last year. Now, uh, you know, I, the Titans' defense is really good, man. That, that, this, t- Tennessee's a playoff team last year. Yes, they you are. Know, I, I, I think uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna show uh, show that they can go into other places and, and win. So, yeah, uh, I'll take the uh, the Titans here. Yeah, bud. This is that was a statement win last week for sure against the Patriots. This Titans team, if they can keep momentum going, they may just sneak in again this year. But uh, it, well, we're, that remains to be seen. But. Fantasy wise, I'm not really touching a lot in this game, guys. I, mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to be a low scoring game. If anything, the Titans defense, but even even Marlon Mack, who's been red hot, I'm, I'm not touching him or Andrew Luck. I, I don't want any piece of this game fantasy wise. I think if you're betting this game in Vegas, you're going to take the under, regardless of what the point total is. But let's move into the next game. In this next game, there's going to be a boatload of points, guys. <laughs> And I'm talking about Buccaneers going down to visit the Giants in New York. Mm. This is going to be heavy on the points. Uh, right now, the Giants are a one-point favorite at home. I can't seem to figure that out because the Buccaneers' offense has been good. The Giants' defense has not. Same thing with the Buccaneers. They might not have any defensive... There might not be any punts in this game, guys. I mean, they might just score back and forth the entire game. But uh, I'm going to go with the Buccaneers on the road, plus one. I just think Fitzpatrick has been much better than Eli Manning. But I think if the Giants were to win this game, it's going to be because of Saquon Barkley. That kid has just been unbelievable. Uh, fantasy gold is what they call this game, guys. I'm taking every little bit of it that I can. Uh, Tooch, who are you going with in this game, man? I got the Bucks. I think I'm going to take the Giants. I don't know. I, the Giants have been hot defensively against the pass lately. Uh, they're only giving up 25.3 points per game, and uh, Tampa Bay giving up 32.3 points per game. I, I think you're right. There's going to be a lot of points scored. You know, you st- uh, New York Giants, of course, you know, there, there's been a lot of Eli Manning needs to go talk. Uh, so they just don't have anybody else, Tyler. <laughs> Joe, they just, they, there's nobody but Eli. You're not going to get anybody else. He's going to put up some points. I think uh, the Giants will take it. Yeah, I think so too, man. And whew, fantasy galore here, man. I know Tyler... Uh, you you have you have one of the guys on this team, don't you? I think didn't you have Saquon in one of your leagues? I know we were talking about this at some point. No, not not say I don't have Saquon. Um, no, the only person that I actually I just dropped Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, no, I'm staying away from this game. <laughs> I don't got about it. This is a garbage game. I mean, it's a garbage game for me, honestly. I mean, it's I don't know, bro. Fantasy it's too, garbage. It's, too, it's fantasy garbage. You're right. It's fantasy garbage because it's like I don't know. It's like you thought I thought I thought Ryan Fitzpatrick was gonna show up against the Redskins, who just got exposed by a bad Falcons team. And so you would think both teams would take advantage, right? You would think <laughs> Yeah, it didn't happen. You would I mean, even this even the Giants, the Giants, yeah, you would think both these quarterbacks would take advantage of this matchup, but what's gonna happen? And so I'm I'm gonna pick the Buccaneers. <laughs> After all that, you're taking the Buccaneers anyway. Um, I'm the only one with the Giants, but hey, <laughs> I, I don't think it's. I think it's going to be close, and I think regardless of what happens, we're all winners because it's going to be fantasy gold for any of these, <laughs> any, any of these guys you start. It's going to be a win-win for you. Any Giant, any Buck, you can fire up. Just get them in there. It's going to be worth your while. So no matter who wins, we all win. But. We're getting through the games. We're moving along. Now we're into Houston against 
your well the Redskins local for Tyler there. Uh, Redskins at home, two and a half point favorites against the Texans, which or I'm sorry, I read that wrong. Whatever. Uh, the Texans are two and a half point favorites on the road. But I thought that was a low number. I think the Texans are a way better team than the Redskins right now. I know that defense is good on the Skins, but you know they can be beat. And I'm going to go with the Texans here. Deshaun Watson looking incredible. And Demarius Thomas had a really good first game with this team. That could be a guy to watch the rest of the season. And, and, to, and to approve and otherwise, Houston and Atlanta, Houston, period. Um, skins, skins show. I thought the skins was going to choke last week against the Buccaneers, but they actually showed up and bounced back from a Falcons team. Um, that Swearinger and those guys is playing good in the backfield, but this is different. You're talking about a playoff contender team of the Houston Texans. That's JJ Watt and the boys. That ain't. That's this is a different type of animal. And so, the, if, if Watson doesn't turn over the ball, Houston wins this game. The Redskins have a hard time scoring 14 points. They do, and, and that and that Texans team is Super Bowl caliber if they can get going at the right time. I mean, the offense is good, the defense is good. So I'm taking the Texans, you're taking the Texans. Tooch, you taking the Texans too? I'm all over Houston in this one. I'm so- sorry, Gaines. I, I, uh, the Texans' defensive line is playing so good. I, I don't think Washington's going to be able to run the, run the ball. Uh, I think... Uh, Houston, you know, the Houston's climbed all the way up to the number nine overall defense. You know, after one time, Joe, I think we talked about them. They were 27th, mm. you know, and, and recently, you know, Washington was as high as like fifth defense. They've fallen all the way to number 17. So lately, you know, Washington defense not really playing. I love the Washington defensive line. They've got some uh, Alabama ki- two Alabama kids up front that are re- young kids that are really playing good gains. Don't know if you've been watching Jonathan Allen and uh, yeah. Deron, Deron Payne. Yeah, yeah. Man. Woo, the future is bright. This uh, off, offense of Washington, I don't like. They're banged up. Uh, I don't think Jamison Crowder is going to go again this week. Um, I'm going to take Houston. Real quick, what, and when you say future bright, I hope, I hope you mean after they fire this coach and get a new coach. That can make them <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the players, I mean. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, for sure. <laughs> we're all on the same page with that, man. And now for the game we were talking about with Ryan. With his pick of the week with Ryan, or I'm sorry, with uh, Br- Ben Roethlisberger. Man, I can't even talk. Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers going down to play the Jacksonville Jaguars in Florida. Uh, the Jaguars at home are six-point dogs. So Steelers are six-point favorites on the road here, boys. But I got to go with the Steelers, man. They're just playing way better ball. This Jags defense is not the same as they were last year. They are actually pretty bad, from especially against the pass. So I'm going to go with the Steelers here. James Conner, probably going to have a great day. Looking forward to this game. Uh, Gaines, who you got in this one? Um, I got Pittsburgh. Nice. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Drops yeah. the mic. <laughs> tooch, 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 you going with yeah. the Steelers too? I'm going to take the Steelers. There's Jacksonville's a bad team. Their defense is good, but it's not going to matter. The Steelers have been sacking the quarterback. The pass rush has come alive. Um, offense is just a lot better. You know, I'd, James Conner doesn't play. I think it might be closer. That's the only thing that would keep me from it being less than six points. But uh, by all accounts, he should play. Yeah, it looks like it. I think this is a statement game for Conner. You know, he's been making a statement all year, but now Le'Veon's gone for good. Well, probably for good from the Steelers organization. And now Connor comes out and he's like, "I'm your guy," and boom, has a huge day. So mm-hmm. if you have James Connor, you're gonna fire him up. Ends up being the best bargain of the fantasy season for everybody because I don't think anybody, if you drafted him, you took him in the last round, or if you picked him off of waivers, you got him before the season started. I know I did that in the Goon League, so I'm looking forward to having him riding on my starting roster the rest of the year. And when it comes to the team that they're playing against, the Jaguars. I do have to say, though, our guy Jeff Schwartz, who we're thinking of him with his house and, and everything going on with the wildfires in California, his guy is Blake Bortles this week, the garbage man. King, Blake is the king of garbage time, gentlemen, and and I think he might have some points here against the Steelers' defense. Yeah, yeah, he will. He, he does every week, 320 yards last week, and, uh, yeah, he just, you know, throws – late each other. They're, they're, they're going to be playing catch-up against Ben Roethlisberger and that great Pittsburgh offense. 
Yeah, I, I think so too, man. And who that is going to be? I think it's going to be a surprising lopsided victory for the Steelers. So I think mm. it'll be a fun one to watch. But let's move into the next one here. We're still in Sunday afternoon, man. There's a lot of games this Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Cincinnati going down to Baltimore to play the Ravens. And for some reason, this game is even. It's a straight pick I don't understand it. The Ravens are a way better team. I don't, I don't understand where the odds makers are coming with this one. But I'm taking the Ravens at home. That defense is so good. The Bengals offense can't get anything going. And it doesn't even look like A.J. Green's going to play. I mean, he is questionable, but I doubt he plays in this game. And without, you know... Without much offense, I can't take the Bengals with good faith here. I think the Ravens are just a better team. Tooch, you going to you taking the Ravens as well? Yeah, Ravens will win this game. I'm, I'm almost positive. Uh, this is a game I like the most uh, as far as picking. Uh, I think it's going to be a good Alex Collins game. Uh, he's, he's had he's had 16 uh, red zone snaps in his last four games, including nine inside the ten. So. Uh, hopefully they lean on they learn they lean on Alex Collins. Alex Collins was a good late season player last year. I think uh, uh, Alex Collins might be in for a big day against that weak uh, Cincinnati defense. I, I could see that too. And and Gaines, before I toss it over to you, I, I want to ask: Do you guys think Marvin Lewis is the coach of the Bengals after this Sunday? Mm. Um. Yeah, I mean, why now? Was it doing him? He been here the last fifty years. But why, <laughs> why? Why are you gonna fire him in middle season now? I mean, no, I might as well wait till the end of the season. Ain't no point in doing it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. At this point, what does it even matter? I mean, who are you gonna pull put in there? Yeah. Um, but uh, I imagine you're probably on the same page here, taking taking the Ravens. Uh I mean, it kind of. Do we know for a fact if, if if Joe's gonna play or not? Joe Mixon or Joe Flacco? No, no, Flacco. The hip, the, he's I'm still Joe questionable. Flacco. Yeah, yeah, I'm worried about his hip because even if he does play, it, with, with that hip, he can't. I don't. He doesn't have the same torque on his deep ball, and 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 then the Bengals, dog, them dudes hit hard. Them dudes hit, and if, and that goes. If, and if Lamar Jackson is playing, how, if can't, will he be running? Will he take a hit? I'm right. gonna go ahead. It's, it's a pick 'em. I'll take the home team. Um, I just, who, whoever hits harder, I think is going to win this game, honestly. But I'll go ahead and take the Ravens. Yeah, I, I think whoever hits harder and, and whichever kicker is best. And I think in this right. case, Justin Tucker's Tucker. probably going to take this one home. And, 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 that's my, and that's my kicker. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, there you go. Best, arguably the my, best kicker in the league. My favorite kicker. Yeah, it's hard to believe anyone has a favorite kicker. But, you know, there's... Justin Tucker is just a fun guy to watch, man. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a ball striker, man. That dude really strikes the ball against. Just... What would it take? What, what would it take? Would they take him for? Could we could we trade um, Burton, Burton man. and Kevin White for Tucker? Can we can we make that happen? We gotta get. Uh, That'd be awesome. I, we gotta if we could get him, man. That'd be great. I, I have zero confidence in our current kicker, uh, Gates. Yeah. Well, we'll have to just wait and see what they do with him. But they paid him nine million or so, and so. I can't imagine Cody Park is going anywhere anytime soon unless he misses three more this week. But I guess we'll wait and see on that one. But now that we've talked about this game, let's move into the next one. This is another garbage game, guys. This is absolute garbage. We're going in Sunday afternoon. The Raiders going down to play the Cardinals in Arizona. (laughs) The battle of the garbage men. Uh, The Raiders are four-and-a-half-point dogs on the road. The Cardinals are a a four-and-a-half-point favorite for probably the first time of the season. David Johnson going to have a huge day here against the Raiders. This is a game that's only fantasy relevant. It has no other appeal. So I'm going to go with the home team and the Cardinals. Two, who are you taking here? Oh, I love the Cardinals in this game, man. Uh, uh, their defense actually playing pretty good. I know they're 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 uh, they've climbed up to number twenty overall, but yeah. you know the uh, the Raiders uh, are terrible against the run. It's a great David Johnson day. Now, the other thing is that uh, in the last six games, they've given up six touchdowns to tight ends. So if, uh, you know, uh, Ricky Seals-Jones, if somebody, you need a tight end with six teams on a bye, you know, uh, I think he's available in a lot of leagues. He is. I needed him on a, on, a, on a bye last week, and he got me 10 points. I was pleasantly surprised. So he's a guy you can definitely look at. And, you know, obviously... Jordy Nelson, there was talk this week about him possibly retiring, but I, I have not seen anything break on that afterwards. So 
as of now, it looks like he is questionable for this game. But that would be something else if he actually retired now because they would have nobody to throw to. Mm, 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 mm. But Gaines, who are you taking in this game? I'm going I'm to go, I'm take Arizona. Arizona, and I think Arizona is a streaming defense. For sure. I, um, a streaming defense. I just picked him up. Yep, good job, brother. I did the, I did it earlier. Um, it's it's just it's smart. I mean, who? Yeah, pretty much. And David Johnson, guys, like you guys said, and it's a it's a new coach. They they both got new coaches, mm-hmm. but Arizona they just they they still fly to the ball. They still fly to the ball. They going through a lot right now, but I just feel like Arizona has more offensive weapons. They have the quarterback of the future for sure. Oh yeah, and um, Chris, I don't know if Christian Kirk is gonna go, but I just feel like they got more weapons and stuff. They definitely have more weapons, but let's be honest. And most of us are probably not going to watch this game, no. or, or if we do, it'll be when the Red Zone Channel switches over <laughs> to it. So, or Fantasy yeah. Zone, or whatever you guys watch. Uh, I'm a Red Zone guy myself. But let's move into the next game. A little bit more of a better matchup here. Uh, the Broncos got to go down to play the Chargers in L.A. Chargers at home are seven and a half point favorites. While the Broncos have been playing better ball, I'm still going to take the Chargers here. Phillip Rivers and the boys, Melvin Gordon, these guys have just been unbelievable. I'm going to take the Chargers at home here, and you know I'm not sh- I'm not going to sh- I'm not going to say the Broncos are a bad team, but uh, the Chargers are just a better team right now. Two, who you like in this one? I like the Chargers too. Uh, I, I I don't think it's. Uh... It, it's as, as you know. I, don't, I think it'll be a close game. I, uh, you know, Broncos coming off a bye, so they've had you know two weeks to prepare. Uh, sneaky play is is the Broncos tight end now. The Broncos are without Demarius Thomas. Yes, they are. Uh, and, and Jeff Hurman got ten catches in Week Nine. So I don't know if you uh, again like I'm going tight ends here. If you're looking for a sneaky or you got a tight end on a bye, you can do a lot worse than Jeff Hurman. I think uh, you know the. Los Angeles pass defense uh, you can you can exploit with the tight end. So uh, for sure, keep an eye on Jeff Hewerman. No doubt about that. And, and, and while we're talking about the Broncos, we got to talk about Cortland Sutton. Uh, he his first game without Demarius Thomas, he you know he, he had a decent game. I think he had eight or nine points. But I think he, he's going to get more and more targets as the, as the weeks go on. Uh, the Chargers secondary is not terrible. I mean they're 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 actually pretty good, but. You know, I you imagine they're going to focus on Emmanuel Sanders, giving Sut- Sutton a lot of room to work on the field. So I like Sutton in this game, and then obviously I love everybody on the on the Chargers. Uh, Melvin Gordon, you're going to fire up Philip Rivers, Keenan Allen, uh, the Williams. I want to call them brothers. They're not <laughs> uh, the Williams crew. And then you know, even if you're talking about you know a flex option, Austin Eckler has been catching a lot of passes out of that backfield. Definitely a guy to keep an eye on. Uh, he's available in a surprisingly amount, surprisingly high amount of leagues right now. So if you can pick him up, that's definitely a good handcuff for Gordon. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, Gaines, who you got in this game? Um, I'm gonna take the Chargers. Yeah, I'm man. Gonna take the Chargers. I'll take the. I'm gonna take the Chargers. Um, just just for the passive game, I like. I don't trust um Keenum honestly, but I like Philip Lindsay. I have him. But yeah. um, I, I just I got Chargers D the other week. I just feel like they're flying around more. I feel like they got somebody, they got a defensive guy over there doing some special things. And yeah, I'm on board with that, man. It's the Chargers playing great ball, and 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 Tooch, we were talking about it earlier. What if there was an LA LA Super Bowl? Mm. That'd be that'd be a fun one. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it would be fun. But there's 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 a, there's a lot of teams we want to see in the Super Bowl over those guys. Am I right, guys? Yeah. yeah. At this point in time, who do who do you guys think uh, are the Super? Who do you see in the Super Bowl like right now? Like Saints, Chiefs, you know, and a, either one of you guys. James, I'll let you lead it off. Yeah, I mean, you said about like right, right now, or like after Sunday night. Right, just right now, we, <laughs> going into week eleven. Okay, so um, right, yeah, it would have to. I would say the Saints and the Chiefs. That would be a. That would be a. That would be. That might be a, a all time uh-huh. ratings, all time ratings Super Bowl, if you will. Yeah. Mahomes and Breeze. The I mean, the Godfather and the almost rookie of the year. I mean, man, that'd be awesome for ratings and TV and football. 
It'd be a high scoring game, honestly. You know, guys, I'm I'm probably in the minority here, but I'm gonna go Saints Steelers. Uh, mm. I think that would be a, a killer Super Bowl matchup. Wow. I think right now those teams are trending in that direction. I think it'd be a fun one to watch. And and and, and I'm gonna give some love to the Bears too. I, I think they would Thanks. lose to the Saints in the NFC Championship right now if they played right this second. Not to say that they might not come back around later throughout the year, but uh, I think I think Saints Steelers would be an unbelievable Super Bowl. And then also, and then an honorable mention. What about a Bears Chiefs Super Bowl? Yeah. Oh man. Hey, I'm just saying. It's the coaching tree. Why not? It is. Now it is the coaching tree. It's the best chance we've had to get to Super Bowl in a long time. I mean, we're we're years ahead of schedule, guys. This is this is year one with our rookie coach, and we we're growing on the fly. It's not out the cards yet. It's not out the cards. Definitely, I love the speculation. We can play back the tape later on. Maybe one of <laughs> us, maybe one of us hits it on the head. It could be a great promo, man. Let's see what happens there. But we both we all like the Chargers, and we we're just talking about the Saints, and that's the next matchup we're going to talk about here. Sunday yeah. afternoon, Eagles Saints. They got to go down to play the Saints in New Orleans. That's a tough task. Saints are nine point favorites at home against the Super Bowl champs. So with that said, I know nine points is a lot, but I'm still taking the Saints. This Eagles defense is not the same as they were. That offense is not the same either. I'm taking the Saints all day here. Uh, Gaines, who are you going with here? Yeah, I'd be surprised if the Saints don't continue to steamroll because yeah, they're not they're, they're not the same. Winston is the same. Yeah. It, yeah. Saints, dog. Let's go. It's a, it's a fine oil machine. They're rocking. Two or two you got? Well, it's going to be a lot of passing in this game. I'll tell you that right now. Sa- uh, Eagles can't run the ball. Uh, Saints are great at stopping the run. So yeah, this is going to be an air- aerial assault. I'll, st- I'll still take the Saints at home to cover the spread. Yeah, I love it, man. And I still think fantasy-wise, you're going to fire up everybody you could. Elshon, you're gonna fire up Wentz, probably. Uh, you know, <laughs> Zach Ertz. You're gonna fire up all the running backs for the Saints. Even even Ingram probably has a, you know, couple goal line carries. I don't expect a huge game out of him, but I think you could fire up Ingram as a flex. And then I think Traquan Smith makes an appearance here. Yeah, uh, Traquan Smith probably has a nice matchup, and nice. you know they just signed Brandon Marshall too, so you gotta you gotta remember that. The ex bear Brandon Marshall. So uh, I'm gonna go with the Saints as well. You're gonna fire up everybody you got. This is gonna be one of the games of the week. So uh, yep. Let's move into the next matchup though. This is the one that we all care about. <laughs> we talked about it with Ryan, so we'll touch on it real quick. Sunday night, you got Vikings Bears. Bears at home, two and a half point favorites. So they're making it close to two and a half points. Vegas wants you to take the Bears. It's a tough matchup, but I'm still taking the Bears. Two and a half points at home. You know, Soldier Field is, is a tough place to go in. Even if you're a, a Viking, I mean, you're used to the cold, but you're not used to the Soldier Field atmosphere. So I'm taking I'm taking the Bears here. I think it's going to be a close game, but I think the Bears edge it out probably by a touchdown. Two, who are you taking in this one? I have a feeling I know. Uh, I'm a Bear Ball washer. I'll take the Bears. I'll take the Bears. Taking the Bears. The Bears. Gaines, I know who you're taking, man, but you got to tell me. Who is it? Going with the Bears, fam. Going with the Bears. Oh, we're fired up, man. Fired up for Sunday night. Is it Sunday yet? Mm. Uh, it's only mm-hmm. Wednesday. God right. darn it. We still got, we still got to do some waiting here. Um, man, so we like the Sunday night game, but let's talk about this Monday night game, boys. Mm. Chiefs going down to L.A. to play the Rams in one of probably the highest scoring games in the history of football. Uh, the Rams are three point favorites at home, which is crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised this game isn't a straight pick em, but I'm gonna give the edge to the home team as well. I think I'm gonna take the Rams, but just barely. I don't even know how to pick this game. All, all I know is I wanna watch it and I wanna see all the points. And uh, I just know that we're gonna be talking about the highlights next week and we're gonna be drooling still. Uh, Gaines, who you got in this one? Damn, bro, I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know. I thought the Rams was going to beat the Saints. 
I don't know. I don't know, man. It's it's tough. I, I'm gonna go with the Rams. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Rams. I mean, Gurley. I'm gonna go with the Rams for yeah, no man. apparent reason. You got two. It's the wow. You got a. This is the best quarterback and quarterback to running back combo for both teams. Yeah. Which I, what defense is gonna show up? Both teams been struggling. I think that I think both teams are struggling, fam. I don't know, bro. I'm gonna go with the better defensive line, which I think is the Rams. I will tell you, I wouldn't start either defense in this game. I, no. I, I think they're going to be a revolving door for most of the game. Uh, this is going to be a tough one for fantasy defenses. So get both of those defenses on the pine. You don't want to touch them with a 10-foot pole this week. But you do want to fire up every single player that you can on either team. I will say, we didn't even mention this, but Cooper Cup out for the year. He tore his ACL last Sunday. Oh, so, no. Yeah, so no Cooper Cup. So... The Vikings or the Vikings, the Rams take a hit with that, so that that puts up the stock of Robert Woods. It puts up the stock of Brandon Cooks. Even Todd Gurley's going to get some more targets, and you know there's a lot of mouths to feed, and it just got a little smaller. So if you have any of those guys, they are going to be better in fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tooch, who you got in this one, bud? A uh, couple guys to watch. I'll, I'll take the Rams. I think at home, I just because they're the home team. And a, a Chiefs, I think, could easily win it. I just think uh, Mahomes a little greener than Goff. And then uh, you got two good running backs. You run on the Rams, but the the guys to watch for that's going to take Cooper Cup's place is Gerald Everett and Josh Reynolds. So keep an eye on them. Yeah, there's there's a handful of replacement options, and I think we're going to find out real quick this week if if any of them are fantasy relevant. Boys, we made it through all the games. We talked about all kinds of fantasy stuff, man. This has been a great show. We had Ryan Heckman joining the show, man. Thanks again to him for coming on. Man, he was a great guest. We, we, we got lots of knowledge on the Vikes. Man, we talked about all kinds of stuff, man. This was absolutely unbelievable. Um, Gaines, man, it was an absolute blast having you on. Your first show with us. We, we absolutely love having you, man feel like you're a great addition to the fantasy football goon family um man this is this is gets me fired up man i can't wait to keep doing more of these shows every week we're gonna get better we're gonna have more fun you know we're gonna get more guests we're gonna have more segments this is gonna be a blast thank you buddy we we really appreciate you being a part of this man yeah man man uh, yeah uh, tooch joe i appreciate you guys having me on Allow, allow me. I hope I didn't mess up too bad. <laughs> but oh, you're good. It, 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 it all, it all felt natural, and um, I'm just appreciative to be here with you guys, and just hope the listeners, hope we, hope we help some people out. Absolutely, man. You yeah. got to get those fantasy victories, and Tooch, brother, you're always here. We, we, we love having you with. I love having you with me. You've been here since the beginning. I love you, brother. Uh man. How, how you, how you feeling? Likewise. Good. Feeling good. Uh, thanks for coming on, Tyler. And uh, uh, I know Tyler's going to be promoting the show like mad, so that's great. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know he's going to be fired up. He's going to have to hit that punching bag a few more times. <laughs> talking of, talking about his fantasy opponents and stuff like that, man. This is going to be fun. Whenever you, Every time you guys come on to the um, the bar fly tailgate show, I, I, I'd be excited. I'm pumped up on you. I want to talk to these guys. These are the guys I want to talk to right now. Because we got like an hour before kickoff, and so it's so it's just all dope how it works out. I'm just so appreciative of the whole network. I want to go back to it all, but just when you guys come on the, um, the show on Sundays, you guys are part of that too. And then I, I just know it's for it's for the Bears fans everywhere and fantasy fans everywhere, bros. So it's not about us; it's bigger. Absolutely, well, we man. We really have fun on tailgate, man. We do. We have a lot of fun on tailgate. We have a lot of fun in the Bears bar room. Tons of great shows to listen to, man. Right now, as we speak. Well, actually, it's done now. But uh, Buffon 55 recorded tonight. It's a great show. You guys can check out tomorrow. Uh, well, on your podcast stream, it's it'll be there. And then you got you know talk it out with Trey Busy, talking about mm-hmm. mental health. It's great stuff going on. We'll be on your podcast stream tomorrow morning. And then you know coming up, man, we have a big weekend coming up, guys. We got the Barfly Tailgate Show Sunday previewing this big game against the Vikings in prime time going to be good stuff and then monday you know what i'm talking about we're talking about draft dr phil bears hour live you know regardless of the outcome on sunday the doctor is going to be fired up he's going to be he's going to be bringing it and Gaines, aren't you moderating that show 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Gaines Boom. moderating the show on Monday for Bears Hour Live. So lots lots to be fired up about. It's going to be good stuff. Uh, and then And then Tuesday, they're going to record the best podcast, the best Bears podcast on the planet. We're talking about 100 Proof. It'll hit your podcast streams next Wednesday, just before Turkey Day. Man, get ready to gobble gobble. <laughs> That's going to be good stuff. And uh, lastly, you know, I'll talk to these guys about it afterwards. The fantasy football goon. You know, we'll see if maybe we would record on Tuesday next week. We'll see if that works. If not, we'll record per normal and get it to you on Thanksgiving. But we have tons of great stuff coming your way. Thanks to the barkeeper, Mr. Aldo Gandia, for, you know, putting this beautiful group of people together. We appreciate you. Thank you for letting us do what we do. And gentlemen, it's been a blast. We've reached the end of our show, and I always end it the same way. God bless America. God bless football. And let's kick some ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's Bear what, down, baby. And that's what I'm talking about. So let's get a fantasy victory this week, gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right. See you guys next week. So long. Farewell. I'll be just saying goodnight. I hate to go and leave this pretty sight. So long. Farewell. I'll be just saying adieu. 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 To you and you and you.